Sounds good to me. Good, busy, but I've I've pretty much always been busy. My quietest years were pretty much while I was at college. So I'm full fledged career mode, so mostly good busy. I'm I, I like having things to do. I, I need time to recharge, obviously, but keep myself going. I am in education. I can hear you. People Callie can't. Hear me. can't. Oh, Callie, is this better? Just wait a sec. Cool. All right. Excellent. Um, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. Um, what would you do, man? What'd you get up to? As I said, I'm in education, so I teach uh -huh. music. Oh, cool. So. Uh, oh yeah, of course. I remember in Fox seeing your uh, euphonium mute, which I think I was one yes. of the only people who knew what that was. Is that is that your primary instrument? That is my primary instrument in the band world. Yes, uh, primarily I'm a pianist. That would be uh -huh. my that'd be my top instrument. But I'm impressed that you know what a euphonium is. Yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah. That's I, nice. Yeah, I was in um, I, I, I was in my uh, school orchestra as well. So I know bits and pieces. The, it, it's funny because it's such a weird instrument because... Oh, wait, I'm going to go change the title. In, sorry, this should be Adam Vervsky, not DR. Uh, sorry, sorry, man. All good. Sorry, go for it. As I was saying, in Europe, it seems like everyone knows what a euphonium is. Everyone knows okay. what a baritone is. We're so, we're but so then, over here. In the States, there's so many people it just goes right over their head and mm -hmm. they don't know. Even though it's not like it's not like it's not a common instrument. The vast majority of bands have oh, euphonium players. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's confusing. But yes, I do have a nice euphonium mute. That would have been in one of my earlier apartment tours, because currently my mute is in my uh, closet, so that would not have made it into this last tour granted so, this last tour was just like the ceiling for like 10 seconds <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so so i've got a fairly conventional story and i just um i saw some people playing drums like i saw like like the dude in church playing drums and i was like man that's cool i want to go and do that um I, your story is probably a less orthodox than most people how did you end up being like i want to play the fucking euphonium man this it's my dream well um it is unusual to start on euphonium or mm -hmm. baritone um, in the States. Uh, it does happen, but it is pretty rare. Um, so I actually, I started a uh, fifth grade band on trumpet. Mm -hmm. um, and I was the annoying kid because my, my parents both have a musical background and I had been taking piano lessons since second grade. So I already had like tried to play the trumpet and my mom had taught me a concert B flat scale. So I was the annoying kid that went into the trial instrument night, grabbed a trumpet, played the scale. They're like, okay, well you're fine. You'll uh -huh. be, uh -huh. okay. <laughs> you'll be able to play that. Okay. Right, so I'll... Then sixth grade, I got braces. Mm -hmm. Now anyone that's ever got braces while playing a brass instrument knows that that is a huge, huge adjustment sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was like the top trumpet, and then I just started slowly falling down due to the braces. And my director was actually trying to get me to switch to tuba um, once that, we hit seventh grade. I, yes and no. Um, but he was trying to get me to switch to tuba because we needed a couple people on tuba. And I said, absolutely not. I want nothing to do with that. Um, I was already playing string bass in our string orchestra. Um, and I'm like, I don't want to play both string bass and two that's bass. just two what and um, string bass and brass bass <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> string bass and brass bass so i didn't want to do that so eventually he just brought me into his office one day he's like here's a euphonium 
fingers mm-hmm. are the same. There's a fourth valve that uh, covers one and three. Try it a bit and see how you feel. And then I tried it and I'm like, okay, I I can see myself playing this. And then I switched and never looked back until mm-hmm. recently now teaching again. It's valuable to be able to play the trumpet. So I'm a much better trumpet player now uh-huh. than I was when I switched. And the, um, are you, a, are you a, like a music tutor as in you just teach people an instrument or are you like the music teacher in a school who teaches I am, music? I am, I am a band director, so I teach band. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's band director, right? Yes. Okay, right. And so I teach I teach band 5 through 12. Mm-hmm. Cool. So I start them and I roll them all the way up to graduation. So what, what pieces are they learning at the moment? Um, one that you might, you might be familiar with, uh, Jacob de Haan. He's a Dutch composer. Mm-hmm. Um, Doesn't ring a bell. So he's he's a pretty well known uh, European composer. I've liked a lot of his stuff. Uh, we're playing a piece um, by him called Ammerland, which is based on a region I believe in Germany. Um, okay. We're currently not looking at any of the classics, but for our last concert, my high school band is probably going to tackle Holst Second Suite. So. Ah, uh-huh, okay. I don't know that. I know he wrote a shit ton of stuff for brass. I don't. I don't know that one, but I know he was a brass. I mean, I know apart from the planets, he was all brass, pretty much. Um, yeah, both of his both of his suites are really good, both the first and second. Mm-hmm. Cool. Highly recommend those. Those are classics. I might check it out. Mm, okay, and so um, uh, when you say you're a band director, does that when I think of that, I tend to think of just like a conductor, like who you know, kind of. I don't know, just comes up at the front and be like, girl, you do this, you do this, you do this. Or is it like more complicated than that? I mean, there is that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But I think most people look at the position of conductor and then just kind of pigeonhole in that. It's like, okay, they get up at the concert and they wave the funny stick thing. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much all they do. When in reality, running a rehearsal is more of what they do most of the Uh time. Yeah. yeah. Um, And that, that requires a lot of instruction and feedback and repetition and all that sort of stuff um so it's a very active teaching environment Mm -hmm. um and then on top of all that i'm teaching the little kids that need a lot more one-on-one that need a lot more specific um like pedagogy pedagogical instruction on like how do i play this instrument how Mm -hmm. do i make a sound how do i hold it correctly how do i get this note out um so i have to cover all of that and then on top of that Running the band program has its own ins and outs. I have mm-hmm. to help um, cover budget stuff. I have to make sure we have supplies we need. I have to order music. I have to, you know, copy, prepare music. I have to blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. So it's basically like running a small business yep. in addition to a teaching position. Uh-huh. So cool. so when you when you say that you are very busy, that now that starts to make a little bit more sense. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and you, always something to do. And do you enjoy it? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, it's what, a lot of fun. What? What? Like, what, what? What's the best part of the job? Uh, everyone always asks that, and I never have an answer. I uh-huh. get asked that all the time. Uh huh. Because uh-huh. I've had like students that like will job shadow me because it's like something they're interested in doing, and that's always part of the questionnaire when they're job shadowing. It's like, what's your favorite part of the job? And yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I you never have an answer. You don't know. There's, okay, there's a lot this, of... Put it this way. Give, give me an example of something you like about the job. This, this is something that's just nice about teaching in general. When you are teaching something, trying to get some concept understood, and the student or students, find it finally clicks, mm-hmm. and you can see it, and then they display that, that's very, very, very rewarding. Because, I mean, that's what you're working towards at the end of the day. Yeah. So that's always a good feeling. Uh, okay, and anything that is kind of a pain in the ass? Say that again? Anything that is just kind of a pain in the ass? Oh, there's tons. Uh-huh, okay, all right. <laughs> there's tons. Right. I won't go into it here, but there's there's tons. Throwing uh-huh. chairs. No, I do not throw uh-huh. chairs at students. Uh-huh. Like, when, um, when, uh, when Whiplash came out, how much of a meme was uh, Not My Tempo? When did that come out? It must have been like 2016, something like that, I imagine. 
That would have been, I would have been in college then. So uh, okay, I sure. couldn't, I well, couldn't well, tell well, you. Were you doing music at university? I was, but I was not super oh, involved in the school of music. So. Uh, okay. All right. So you missed out on all the memes. I must have. Mm -hmm. How do I pick a tuba player? Uh, there's a lot of different ways that that comes around. Um, sometimes students request it, like you said. Uh, sometimes it's like uh, I just need people to do it, and then I ask for volunteers to try it, and then I get some, and then I eventually get some to stick. Or if a low brass student is struggling with range, like a euphonium or a trombone player is struggling getting higher notes out, sometimes going down another mouthpiece size to tuba, because tuba has a much bigger mouthpiece. Sometimes that helps. So, wide variety of ways to get there. Wait, 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 wait. Isn't isn't the guy in um uh Whiplash? Isn't this, isn't he called Fletcher? Like the, the, the psychopath who like throws shit at the yes. students. Oh, yep. yeah. Uh -huh, yeah. 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 We got a very own Fletcher right here. Of course, the Madman Fletcher, indeed. I I do not do anything, yeah, anything like anywhere near the level as. <laughs> As he does have, have, you, have you ever had any kind of um uh i don't know any kind of disasters when playing live like what, anything that comes to mind no not no, not nothing. not not as a director like, I like, had some like interesting... one of the percussionists dropping a cymbal by accident stuff like that the closest <laughs> thing the closest thing i have happened right before a concert um this is a pretty good story so this was my first concert as a director. And I was warming up my, my junior high band, which is the 7th and 8th graders. And uh, I had a kid back playing the timpani, and he was just going to town on these timpani. Um, and I went, I went back, and I grabbed the mallets, and I'm like, okay, this is not how you play the timpani. This is how you're playing it right now. And I go to demonstrate how he's currently playing it, slightly exaggerated. And I I like to carry my baton with me as I go places, and I'll generally keep it in my hand. So I essentially... I need a prop for this. So I essentially had my baton carried backwards in my hand as I grabbed the mallet. Mm -hmm. And then I go to do this wild demonstration of timpani playing, and the baton is long enough that it snaps over the rim of the timpani uh -huh. as I demonstrate. Uh -huh. And so it's, you know, like five minutes before the concert starts and my baton is in two pieces. Uh -huh. So so fortunately, the... I had a backup. So uh, I had to run okay. and grab so that. Fine, no problem. And the, the baton has now been, that specific baton has now been repaired. Uh -huh. um, but I still have the two broken pieces. They are uh, they're wall decorations in my office at work now. Uh -huh. So cool. Uh -huh. That timpani sounds like a 2007 PD player. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is a uh, Super Mario Odyssey speedrunner goes by the name of Timpani, I believe. Uh, okay, that must have been what Kelly was thinking of. I believe. I believe he's like he does. I want Yo, to say he did like all moons or something. Rib, something. Rib, ribs, are you interested in uh, joining Fletcher's band? Okay, I can't find specifically who I was thinking about, but but he he does exist. Yeah, Callie, Callie can confirm. Callie oh. thought of it. So, so anyway, dude, so uh, I guess a good place to start with me is, can you tell us how, about the inception of Fock, if I'm pronouncing it correctly? Yeah, I, uh, I didn't say it out loud all that often, so mm -hmm. uh, I guess in my head it is like Fock. Okay. It, it's like, not quite fuck, but not quite Fock, uh -huh. like Fuck. Uh -huh, Fuck. So it's, but so this was uh, it. It has its origin way, way back um, in summer of 2018. Actually, I believe it was June of 2018. So to put the whole timeline in perspective, I just released this thing, you know, like a month ish mm -hmm. ago now. Um, 
or a month and a half ago. So um, Polly and I were uh, just starting to be good mates at the time. And uh, he sent me a message one morning. I could probably find the exact time uh-huh. yeah, if yeah, I went yeah, digging. But um, he sent me a message. Uh, he's like, dude, I just had the craziest dream um, with the perfect horde idea. And said that it was... Ah, oh, here we go. Yeah, uh, June 25th, 2018 at 5.40 a.m. OMG, the goat unhoard video came to me in a dream. Fellowship of the Keen. Uh-huh. So that's where the acronym found its origin, was Fellowship of the Keen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that, this kind of inspired Polly and I to hoard. We were like, oh, we should do this then. This is something that we should do. That seems cool. And this was, mm-hmm. you know... The last thing, the last horde that had come out was probably, I think, uh, K3, um, with the bit of green project thrown into the mix of it. Uh-huh. Um, wait, wait, so wait, it so did, when was this? Sorry? This was summer of 2018. So, so, like five and a half years in the making, it was? Something like that, uh-huh. uh, when you look at the totality of it. So then... Uh, Polly and I started trying to put together like a kind of an outline of like what we thought it would be. Um, we didn't really get anywhere with it. And then um, later on in the year, I got into top 50. Um, and then the chaos of 1127 happened. Uh, anyone who was around at the time knows what I'm referring to. Wait, um, 1127? Are you unfamiliar with eleven twenty seven? The mean, day the elite, the I, I, day the elite imploded. I mean, I I haven't heard it. I, I I've been around since then, but I haven't heard it described in those particular terms. So I don't know exactly what you mean. Yeah, I'm sure if you give me like a tiny bit more context, I probably know. Well, n- it was it was the whole mess with, uh, it was it was a combined. It was a whole bunch of things. It was goose. It was Carl. It was. That was BU7. Oh, was, oh, okay, right, right, right. That right. was yeah, 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 all yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, yeah. Yeah, so that happened. So, um, what, so what did you call it, 1127? Yeah, because that was the day that that happened. Right, that okay. all went down. I, I quite like yeah. that, I quite like that, yeah. So, I, I know Polly and I refer to it as 1127. I've seen some other leaders refer to it as that, too. It's a, it's okay. a, it's a... That yeah, that was the day I got top fifty two with Arcash fifty fives. So that happened, and that whole mess happened, and I'm like, you know, I'm kind of like, I need to, I need to distance from the elite for a bit. Like, I don't want to deal with this nonsense. Um, yeah, and so then I'm like, you know what, Polly, I'm gonna keep playing through December, obviously, because I'm about to finish with my semester with of college, and so I'll have a bunch of extra free time. I'm gonna keep playing. But I'm just, I'm not going to post anything I get in the month of December. I'm just, I'm not going to do it. Um, maybe I'll do like a mini hoard or something. Um, and Paul is like, okay, I guess I'll, I'll get it on this too. So we hoarded through the month of December of 2018. And there was talk between the two of us like, okay, well, some of this, like, maybe like this is a good time for part 11. Um, what ended up being part 11. Um, and then I could go for this time for Falk. Like, we were thinking about it then. Um, and because I remember specifically with, like, Deep OSA. I got, like, Deep OSA probably 41 um, for part 11. I'll confirm that. Yeah. So I got Deep OSA 41 for part 11. And I played a little bit for 40. And I was like, you know, if I get 40, I'll do 41 for part 11. And then I'll I'll save 40 for... For Fock. Um, because then we were thinking Fock was going to happen much, much sooner. We were originally looking at a late 2018 release, and then we didn't get any runs for it. And then we were looking at like a mid early 2019 thing, and then that never happened either. So we were constantly thinking about it. So then, forward through the month of December, right at the beginning of 2019, we released part 12 or part 11. Um, which was our first unhorde, and uh, also kicked off the modern era of unhoarding. 
Indeed. Um, has part 12 happened and then everything else followed suit after that. Uh-huh. Um, so that kind of helped the elite move past 1127 and kind uh-huh. of recuperate uh-huh. a bit. Uh-huh. Um, so then that was always in the back of our minds going forward. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so was that, um, uh, was that a conscious thing then? You were, you were actually thinking, man, like the community's really not in a good spot right now. Like this would be something that would, you know, push things in a positive direction. It was more of like after the fact we realized, yeah, this was the right time for something like this. And then the next horde, the why am I blanking on what that horde was called? That was like that had uh with us part eleven and Matt oh, Carl K four. No, that was uh, amalgam- much later. No, um Century Club, Amalgamate, um Century Club. Was uh-huh. it Century Club? That doesn't sound right. It's like M- early M- 2019. M97? M- I, you know, and no. Let me just scroll back. It was, no, it was PD. Uh-huh, okay. It was PD. That was the one. Um, PD came next. Then it was Century Club and blah, And then it was K4 later on. Um, Yeah. A lot of people, I, I mean, I also forgot about the name of PD. I remembered it specifically. Um, and leading up to PD, uh, anyone that paid attention during uh, Falk noticed that I got my Cavs SA 115 in February of 2019, early 2019. Yeah. So part 11 was released. And then like a couple weeks later, I'm playing for a Falk time. I get it. Uh-huh. There's a video. I took a video of me on the night of PD's airing with my 115 end screen, like best time saved up. I have no idea where that video went, but somewhere I think I have that video. Um, But then so the years went on and uh, I was determined not to stop streaming in order to get all the times. Like that's what most people do Mm -hmm. when they hoard is they just disappear off the face of the planet for the most part. They stop streaming if they were streaming before. And then they just get everything and then do the big reveal. Well, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep streaming. So I always had like what I was doing publicly, what I was streaming, and then what I was doing on the side in the off hours, um, typically playing for something for Falk. So that's why my times are so spread out over the course of like two years or whatever it was. Yeah. Do you want my uh, do you want my hex code? Uh, if you know it off my heart, then uh... F. F five D two three nine. F five D two three nine. Man, I should. I've I should, done. I should learn mine off by heart because I always forget to do this on my chat. So. Well, I, you know, I have made a lot of videos uh-huh. for my runs. Right. That and a lot of them involve my font color, so I definitely I I know that one by heart. I. Uh-huh. I could probably guess Polly's within like three or four tries and get it right. Uh, all right. Um, but anyway, so in the background, I was going for that. Polly got quite a few as well over like the span of 2019 and early 2020. Um, and we it, we just kept not finishing putting it together. I was editing my parts piecemeal. I actually have a couple edits of Polly runs that were never released. Um. Mm-hmm. I should ask him what he wants to do with those. Polly, if you're here, let me know. Wait, wait so, um, so he he still got like uh, residually hoarded stuff that hasn't been released yet. No, all of his runs have been posted. Oh, but oh, the I, edits. Okay, the edits. I made a few edits. Some of them are really good too. I made a few edits for him um, over the years because because Falk was edited piecemeal as time went on. I would get a run, and then I would probably edit something together if it was decently significant. So, like, the Cavs SA edit was done in, like, mid-2019. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think five-ish months after I got the time. So, that, edit, that edit's that been sitting around forever. I could probably find the original YouTube upload date. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, can you just give me one thing? I'm just going to close a couple of doors. Okay. Go for it. Go for it. You can chat to chat with chat with chat. 
Yeah, with chat. All his runs, as far as I know, yes, all of Polly's runs are posted. Polly and I have talked pretty candidly about hoarding. So, him and I are pretty much on the same page. Okay, YouTube. Cavs, essay. Or you know what? It would be... It would be Fock 1. Fock 1 old. Here we go. Where's the upload date? Oh, I can probably just... I can just go to the video. September 29th, 2019. There you go. So... Yeah, I'm back. That was my... The first Fock edit was on YouTube. September 29th, 2019. So, been a while. So then it kept going, and then 2020 happened, the pandemic hit. That's right when I graduated college, too. I was student teaching when the pandemic hit. Uh -huh. um, and then I got my first job that summer, and then started my career. I played a bit more, um, and... Then 21 rolled around. I played a little bit more, but I was starting to burn out pretty hard, um, especially of the offline stuff. Um, I'll probably get to this at some point later, but I had several times I'd been playing for for a long time that it, that were burning me out. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just kind of stopped playing one day. Um, I started going out with my now girlfriend, uh, which took up more time. Oh, when, uh, when, things... when, uh, when would this have been? This is uh, spring of 2021. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then with COVID kind of getting out of the way, then more things happened with my job because a lot of things didn't happen because of COVID. So as COVID went away, my responsibilities went up um to where i had started so it was taking up more of my time and energy energy being the biggest part i think i always i pretty much always had time to play if i wanted to the problem was it it takes energy to actually sit down and grind goldeneye mm -hmm. yeah. it is a it is a emotionally draining <laughs> and time draining yeah. um it's a, it's a resource intensive speed run Mm -hmm. as as the individual doing the actual running. So I didn't see it as worth it for a while. Um, I still had this stuff on the back burner. I had all these runs. I had a lot of runs that weren't quite where I wanted them to be because I didn't get the times I was going for. Um, and then Polly and I reworked part of, or Polly and I reworked Falk like probably five or six times. There were a bunch of different forms that it was going to take, some more complicated than others. And eventually, uh, Polly just kind of folded, and he slowly started trickling out all of his hoarded times mm -hmm. um, and cashed out. And then, ah, uh, why was that? I mean, obviously, you don't have to speak for him, but like, what? Why? Why did he kind of just nope out? I think he appreciated the fact that. We've been sitting on it for a while, and there's a certain humor in waiting so long. Like, part of the fun of Fock was everyone reacting to how old a lot of those ones <laughs> yeah, were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because so many of them are from, like, 2019 and early 2020, which is just completely silly that I sat on them for, like, three years. Um, I think he appreciated that, but he was also... Um, he's also done a lot in his personal life getting his career getting his family going like all that sort of stuff so he doesn't have the time or energy either um probably to another level than myself so he figured i'll just i'll drip feed these out like mm -hmm. i don't know if bach is ever actually gonna materialize i'll just i'll just kind of move past it so what finally got me going uh shout out to Cordy. The only reason why Fock probably released is probably QWERTY, um, which is surprising. But he sent me a run. He sent me his uh, Defection 5 that's in, the, that's in the video. He sent that to me and another run in April of 2020. Like, 
hey, can you hoard this for me? I know you're holding on to some things. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then eventually... Wait, how, um, how many people knew, by the way? Um, I, a small handful. Um, I know... I believe D. Jones knew. Uh -huh. I, I know Mop knew, because I talked to him when I got Cavs 101. Mm -hmm. Um... Callie knew because he was helping me with S1. Um, this is the most random assortment of elitists. I thought you were going to, there was going to be a fairly no, cohesive it, well, group here, but it's just all over the place. <laughs> well, when you, when you look at it, those are all like regulars on my stream or that uh -huh. I have right. interacted with okay, a okay, lot okay, okay, okay. over my time. So they're all, they're all people I'm very familiar with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Who else? Sorry. Uh, and then when I went, I did my like trip out west, um, <coughs> the the Fletcher Worldwide tour, where I visited I visited um, Therm and Colton mm -hmm. in KC. I visited JD in Denver, um, and I visited Eric all the way out in Oregon. Um, so I I definitely shared a couple runs with. Uh, Colton and Therm. Because at that point, I'm like, you know what? I'll probably take care of this soon. And then I didn't for another, like, year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and QWERTY eventually just got on my case. Is like, dude, when are you going to finish this? And I'm like, uh, I'm working on it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I did start working on it piecemeal over summer of 2022. I got a good amount of work in. And then I got a couple edits done as the rest of the year played out and then this year rolled around and i'm like okay i am officially tired of this project being on my shoulders for so long i am ready to get this done i'm ready to get this out there whatever form it ends up taking at this point i don't even care I mean, it, it, like, sounds, it, it just, sounds stressful i mean kind of like i mean I it's mean, a I lot mean, of I'm not like you know in terms of the distresses in life it's not the tip top, yeah. right? But like, I imagine it's not, it wouldn't be the kind of acute stress, but that kind of thing happening year after year after year after year, like that would get to me personally. I I have a to-do list out in my living space uh, by my calendar. And on that to-do list for years was fuck, just <laughs> written out, fuck. Yeah. Um, so then this summer, I finally sit down, I finally really motivate myself to do a lot of finishing up um and Polly's out of it now i don't really have anything else i have a like a qwerty run yeah. um so calling it fellowship of the keen no longer really makes sense but i liked the acronym and i've been using it for so long i'm like okay well i need to figure out something else i need uh -huh. to figure out another way to use use this and kind of rebrand it so then i was finishing it up in uh, late October, early November, and finally landed on keeping the acronym of FOC, but then changing it to Fletcher Only Kappa, mm -hmm. which is perfectly on brand for me because yeah, everyone's like, yeah, oh, yeah. well, Polly's going to be in this. Uh -huh. Like, some something's going to happen. And then Polly was in it for a single run, which was already on the rankings because um, he was going to try and get a G5 PB for me for the, uh, for the Inception bit that I did in the video. Mm -hmm. um but didn't quite manage to get one so we just <laughs> used his current pr on the ranks and confused a bunch of people which was great uh, I, I, um, I didn't realize that yeah the the g5 run from polly is not new <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> it's been okay. on the ranks right, for right. a while so he he tried he was gonna go for a, a g5 dltk untied but then like right as him and i were talking about him going for it of course, what would happen, but Ace would finally bother to play the level and untie it. Uh -huh. So, so shout out to Ace for ruining that plan. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, what were the, uh, you mentioned some really long-term uh, goals and grinds you had uh, for that. So what were they, and how many of them did you get in the end? Um, well... Remind myself real quick. S100 was a big one. I, and Callie knows this, I spent a lot of time going for 00148. Um, I got SA148 pretty quickly. 
Um, when I sat down to hoard S1, I had 151s as PBs. Um, and just by sitting down and playing it again for the first time in like a year, I very quickly got down to uh, 149s without help. And then I I talked to Callie for a bit, got a bunch of Callie advice, changed a few things up, very quickly got 148 on SA. And then I spent a long time on and off going for 148 on double O. I had tons of paces. I I have the one clip that I included in Fock of me missing the hole at the end on what was easily 148 pace. Mm -hmm. Like it was that was long and painful. Um Cradle 33 was exhausting. I did manage to get that one. I was that agent. Yeah, mm-hmm. just agent. I spent forever going for that. I just could not get nade drops and A completes. I just and then I got trolled so many times. I think I have all those in my cradle edit. You can see the mm-hmm. I got the troll boost right at the end, right before the final turn. That cost me 33. I missed the platform on what was 33 pace. Um, and I got an A complete so early in my Cradle 33 grind that I wasn't ready for it. And uh-huh. so I just had a really crappy run. So I, I spent, a, that's probably, that might be the time I have sunk the most time into and achieved mm-hmm. is Cradle 33 on Agent, wow. which is stupid. Um, cause it's Cradle. There was, someone, um, there was someone recently who got it on the on the first um the first nade drop, I think. Yeah, so. that's sad. That makes <laughs> me sad. <laughs> yeah. Um what else was Depot 47 on double O took a decent chunk of time. That wasn't like excessively painful. I just don't like the level, so it was it was not great. The the big one was control. Control agent was painful. I duped. I skipped to 358. I got um I got four flat. I posted it. It was my first PB in my second uh apartment in college. I posted it and then I was watching Irie stream and I asked Irie for a few pointers on control. He gave me a couple pointers. Um God bless Irie. And then I, and then I sat down, I did another run, and immediately got 358. I got four. <laughs> I talked to Irie. My very next run, I got 358. Um, so I skipped 359. So then I'm like, okay, well, I'm hoarding this, but I want 357 at minimum because I was getting the paces at the start. I was doing everything where I needed to. But the level refused to give me 357. I, at one point, this is one of my few, like, private interactions with ace i sent ace a run that was a 358 um and i'm like hey why isn't this 357 and he watches it he's like i don't know it should be 357 Uh (laughs) just one of those that's so helpful oh dude awesome so i control agent is easily the most time i've sunk into a run without managing to get it Mm -hmm. um it that was control but between control agent and s1 double o those two burnt me out they eluded at the end yeah and i want to get back and finish those off yeah i was was just about to ask like um I'll, i'll i intend to get to them i am trying to promote a healthier relationship with the game now i'm trying Mm -hmm. to only play in moderation like i'm trying to stream once a week Mm -hmm. um i missed a couple weeks here due to uh the holidays and everything being busy um but i'm trying to stream once a week just to stay in it um get a couple hours in here and there and so i don't burn myself out again is the biggest goal but that also means it's just going to take me longer to pr because i'm not playing as much so what's me What's the flip side of um, promoting a healthy relationship with the game? When when your relationship with the game becomes unhealthy, what does that look like for you? I don't know that it was ever necessarily unhealthy. Okay. Um, just because for the vast majority of the time where I was playing and playing regularly, I had a lot of free time. I had a lot of disposable time on my hands. 
that I could kind of do whatever I wanted to do. And um, for a good chunk of my early streams, like that was a good bit of my social life. Like I had um, some social life outside of that. Um, but a good a good portion of my social interaction was through my stream and through my Discord and all that sort of stuff. Um, but now that's not the case. Now I have a much more robust social life outside of the game. Um, I have a career which is taking up a huge amount of my time compared to like college class does not take up nearly the same amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have as much free time as I did before. Um, I'm generally busier and the the career takes a lot of energy. And again, I needed to have the energy to actually sit down and play. So okay. um, just preventing preventing it from taking that much time again, because if it took that much time now, it would be a problem. Yeah. So it wasn't a problem then, but I burned myself out you on a couple. Cautious. Yeah. So mm -hmm. better safe than sorry. Man. And so... Um... How long do you think you were playing? You said Control is the longest you were playing for. How long do you think you spent on it overall? I would estimate at least over 100 hours. Mm -hmm. Probably. I don't keep track of like my grind times. Um, mostly because I think if I did, it would make me sad. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm exactly <laughs> the same way, dude. I, I can't do that. Um... So I can I can almost like if it's a really short grind, I can give you the time because I'm like, well, I played I did a two hour stream and I got the time. So mm -hmm. um, but for the longer ones, it's so hard to say because I played on and off for control 357 from when I got 358, which would have been August 2019. So I, I played on and off for control from August 2019 all the way up until I probably put in some attempts in early 2021. So that's like a year and a half of on and off play, sometimes more consistently than others. So mm -hmm. I I would say at least 100. Cradle was in the same boat. I don't know that I hit 100 with Surface 1. I don't think I did. Mm -hmm. But a decent chunk of Surface. Yeah. I couldn't tell you for sure. Yeah. Uh... Uh, and so, like, when um, when did that burnout occur? Was that like very close to near when the actual unhorde happened, or was that elsewhere? Well, that was. You mean the burnout with those levels? Yeah, yeah. As in, was it kind of because you got burnt out, and then that was part of the reason why you ended up? Obviously, you told me stuff about Qwerty, but like, was it quite close towards the end, or was this like somewhere in the? I mean, somewhere? kind of. Mm -hmm. late 2021 early 2020 is kind of the the tipping point because that's if you look at the like um how frequently i'm pbing that's when it kind of falls off a cliff and then if you look at how often i was streaming that's off for, oh that's also where it falls off a cliff is kind of late 2020 early 2021 yeah so i think i was just like i've put so much time into this like i'd rather be doing other things at the moment mm -hmm. so I yeah, did. yeah 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 that's fair enough dude um mm. And I mean, it sounds like it was a uh, sounds like it was a good decision. Like from the way you're talking, it sounds like you're doing a lot of stuff that you want to be doing at the moment. Oh yeah, for sure. I have, I've been doing a lot of other things. I've been keeping myself busy in every every meaningful any every meaningful way I could. Mm -hmm. So life's good. I have no complaints. Mm -hmm. okay. So well, would you say that your life getting better has been uh, inversely proportional to the amount of time you play Goldeneye? Again, I don't think that's necessarily true. Okay. I think just the way things developed shortly, or I, I, I think it's like, it might, you might say it's correlated, but I don't think so. Cause mm -hmm. like I've been playing Goldeneye now for the past like couple months, getting back into it again. Um, and nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. cool. <laughs> like it's just the same as it, as it has been. So mm -hmm. I think it's more just, the other things that were going on at the time, it just happened mm -hmm, to yeah. push in that direction. So it was never like bad. Like I'm saying burnout as if I was on the floor, like crying, you know, curled up in a ball crying, mm -hmm. but it was never that point. It was just like, ah, you know, I'm not going to play today. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> so, sounds, that sounds healthy. Yeah. It, it, I, there was no point ever where it was like bad. Okay. So yeah, that makes sense. Dude. 
when did you when did you join the elite? How long have you been part of this mess? So I joined um would have been early March 2018. Mm -hmm. So um put that in perspective, uh part 11 would have come out before I'd been in the elite for a year. I would have gotten Cavs SA 115 before I'd been in the elite for a year. Um, so I, I think I officially joined the ranks the last day of February, I think. Um, but I did not post a time. What does it say? Yeah. So it says, yeah, February 28th, 2018. Is my official join date. Um, my first PR was posted on March 3rd, a couple days later, runway 24, in what is easily the worst capture quality ever. Uh -huh. um, and that's that's a whole other tangent I could go into. My early capture quality was uh -huh. an experience. Um, what, were you, um, what were you using? Oh, let me see if I can find it. I think I still have it sitting somewhere. There it is. Okay, so it's a very, very convoluted setup. And it almost requires a bit of extra context. So Eric Eric seems to know what you're talking about. Yeah, Eric knows Eric knows kind of a bit of what I'm talking about. Um he's he's more alluding to my stream quality. I'm alluding more to my capture quality. Mm -hmm. Um so the first thing I speed ran was actually um, Celeste. Mm -hmm. um, Celeste came out in early 2018, um, and I was going through uh, my February blues, as I call them, um, which is probably... Like, like, like so seasonal affective disorder? Sir, I don't think I actually have seasonal affective disorder. I think it just happens that February... Like around that time is a weird time of year for me typically. Okay. Um, especially in college, because I was always very busy in the falls, and then February would roll around and things would be very quiet, and so it was just like a weird contrast. Um, plus I'd gone through some problems that summer before that I was still dealing with that are unrelated and I won't bring up. Mm -hmm. Um, but regardless, I was looking for something else to do, so I'm like, I'm gonna give speed running a try. So. Um, I'm like, well, what should I speed run? Well, Celeste just came out. I just uh, finished playing through it. Um, and I had a tradition of pretty much every time I finished a game, I would watch a speed run of it. Um, and so I'd watch the speed run for Celeste, and I'm like, yeah, this looks like good. Like this, this, this would be a good game get going. I could do some individual levels here, um, and give that a shot. So I was playing it on my Switch. So. I'm like, I need some way to capture my video. So I'm like, I need an HDMI capture card. So I get, I just go on Amazon. I try to find an HDMI capture card. It comes in. It doesn't work in any sense of the term. I try a million different things. I return it. I find a different one. And this is this is the bad boy right here. It's an uh -huh. Aver Media, Aver Capture HD. Uh -huh. um, so this is an HDMI capture card. And um, so I was using this to stream Celeste and record it. Um, the problem is that at the time, all I had was a MacBook. And if you've ever attempted to use a MacBook with anything third party, you know uh -huh. that it does not go very well yeah, because yeah, yeah. Apple, <laughs> Apple does not like compatibility outside of their little sphere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I was attempting to get that to work. So the recording was notoriously weird. Like the uh, using OBS was extremely laggy, like um, just using window capture, because that's how I was capturing the game, because I couldn't get that directly into OBS. I had to window capture the like recording software. So the quality was awful, really bad, low frame rate, constant drops. Like sometimes it wouldn't work at all. Um, but I started streaming with it. Those were my earliest streams um, in February of 2018. And I have a couple of those uh, Celeste PBs still up on my YouTube. 
Um, and it's funny because um, I've always I've always been a fan of of meme runs. Indeed. For for forever. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's a lot. Let's see. Let's see how many views this has now. So there was this one. Um, there was this one run that was uh, called "True and Pure Any Percent" uh-huh. was the official category title. Okay. And basically, what it was is in the very first screen, you can go to the left instead of going to the right, and then you can input a cheat code, um, and then you put in that cheat code, and then it unlocks all the levels. Uh-huh. And so they were like, yep, do this as fast as you can. And then that counts as like beating the game. True okay. and pure any percent. All right, all right. Which is just ridiculous. Um, and so at the time on Switch, there wasn't yet, uh, there was a specific update that updated the timer um, to track uh, thousandths of a second. It only tracked full seconds on the in-game timer at the time. Mm-hmm. Um so there was an update that hadn't yet come to the Switch because Switch game updates always come notoriously late. Um, that's just part of Switch gaming. Um, so this timing update didn't come through. But uh, that meant that there was a world, a Switch world record I could get. Because if you did that and then the final time read five seconds, that was a tied world record. Because mm-hmm. that was the fastest you could do on Switch. Mm-hmm. So, the, the, so that, I, that was the Celeste equivalent of, of defection, basically. Of no, of dual. Uh huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Think, think uh-huh. dual three. Like, and maybe even, maybe even less than dual three, because mm-hmm. dual three actually requires a little bit of thought to it. Mm-hmm. This required like no thought. Um, I also think I'll look it up. I, I think this no longer exists as a category because they're just like, this is stupid. Why do we have this? This is dumb. Um, but so I got that, and I, I'm like, this is hilarious. Like calling it true and pure any percent. Um, is just too good. Um, I'm betting if they still have it, it's on category extensions. Let me look real quick. Um, ah, no, they've gotten rid of it. Uh, Yeah. I I figured they would because it was very dumb. uh Um, yeah, all the runs were like less than five seconds with the new timing update. Um, Mm -hmm. so I... I uploaded it as Celeste, one true meme, five seconds. And (laughs) YouTube is weird. I think anyone that has spent time, like, on YouTube, in any sort of content creation, knows YouTube is weird. Uh This video is, I believe, by far the most viewed video on my channel. Um... It has how many views does it have right now? It has fifteen thousand and seventy nine views. That's pretty impressive. Like by far the most viewed video on my channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and every once in a while, like every couple months, um, like every maybe six to eight months, uh, the YouTube algorithm will snap it back up again mm-hmm. and suggest it to a ton of people. So it gets watched by a bunch of people again, even though it's just me going in and putting in a cheat code as Uh it's like the dumbest thing ever. Um, And so there's just there's so many there's like tons of comments on this. Like I um, I posted a comment once it's like it picked up randomly one day. And so I posted a comment. It's like, wow, YouTube algorithm decided to send you guys here three years after I uploaded (laughs) it. And then that that comment has one hundred and seventeen thumbs ups. Like the video has mm-hmm. four hundred and thirteen thumbs up. Like it's absurd it's that it's it is by far the most popular video. It's so stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so uh, right around that time, I discovered um, Speed Lore, and this was the period of the Elite where everyone that joined the Elite joined because of Speed Lore. Mm-hmm. That was just that was the reason why people came in. Yeah, dude. Um, so I think the Jungle SA Double O level had just come out. I like binged all of them in like a week or something. Mm-hmm. It was very, very degenerate, but I had a lot of free time. So what else was I going to do? Um, and then I'm like, you know what? I have an N64 console at home. I have a couple controllers. I have GoldenEye. Um, they were they weren't mine. They were my cousins. Um. 
that eventually got donated to my family when they, when he went to college. Um, I'm like, I could grab those and I could speed run Goldeneye. This seems perfect. I like the shorter IL speed runs. That's what I liked doing with Celeste. Um, I didn't really like the pressure of the full thing. Um, and so I went the next time I went home, I grabbed the N64. I grabbed everything and I brought it back. And then so I had to figure out how to capture this game. And I have this, which is an HDMI capture card. Mm -hmm. And for anyone not familiar with the N64 as hardware, it is not HDMI compatible. So what I ended up doing, and I probably have this in this drawer too. Maybe. That must be in a different drawer. Um. I got an HDMI like converter, so it converts RCA to HDMI, um, and it was a cheap little thing, but it worked pretty well. Um, and I had an LCD TV at the time in my room in my apartment, so uh, I had this going into uh, into my. Well, now I've lost my train of thought. N64 went into the converter. That HDMI cord out of the converter went into here. Then another one came out of this and into the LCD TV. Uh -huh. So that was my earliest setup. So it was weird, though. This would connect to my laptop. Um, and I, there was specific recording software I had to use with this, like Avermedia something. It was an Avermedia-specific software um, that I would record with. And the problem, once again, I found that I couldn't use window capture or anything. I couldn't get this in as a direct source into OBS. I couldn't use window capture because it was so laggy. I'm like, how do I stream? <laughs> like, well, yeah. what do you do? You throw your piano bench in front of you between you and the TV. You throw your laptop on there and you point the laptop webcam at the LCD TV. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you look at my early streams um, of Goldeneye. That's how the setup is. That was my setup to get Dam 53 in late March. That was my setup to get Runway 22 a week later. Um, and I was using this to capture all my runs. So all of my runs at the time are in stretched... 16 by 9, because that's what it did. It converted the 4 by 3 signal into a stretch 16 by mm -hmm. 9, upscaled it to upscaled it to 1080. Yeah. Um, so all my runs from back then are just absolutely hideous. Um, but they they pass proof quality. They don't have any, uh, uh, any other issues with them. So got through all that. And so I was streaming with webcam and then like it always led to a bunch of questions because I was recording my runs on direct capture equipment but everyone was watching a webcam stream so the whole time i had webcam stream i always had people coming in like you know this won't count even if you get it right and i'm like i promise you i'm capturing runs even after i had multiple runs uploaded to the ranks with full capture like i still had people come in it's like this doesn't you know this wasn't that won't count like this won't pass proof and i'm like you do know that I already have Dan 53 and Runway 22 mm -hmm. and Bunker 17. Like, I have tons of times on the ranks with this exact setup. Like, it's mm -hmm. fine. It'll be, it will live. Mm -hmm. So, this continued to plague me for a long time. This, the software was awful. If you recorded for longer than, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes, then it would start dropping frames like nobody's business. Um, so, like, if you watch my Runway 24, the one that I posted, the frame drops are wild. There mm -hmm. are so many frame drops because of how late... And it was, like, 45 minutes into a recording. Mm -hmm. And it just couldn't handle anything that long. Um, and then often, I would go to stop a recording, the program would freeze, and then would corrupt the file, and I'd lose the recording entirely. Or I'd hit record... It would look like it's recording. I'd go back and it would keep recording because what happens is, is this circle in the middle turns blue mm -hmm. when it's recording. So I could keep an eye on it and see if it had gone out because sometimes it would just go out randomly. It would just stop. But there was also a glitch where it would stop recording. The program would freeze, but the blue circle would stay there. Mm -hmm. 
So there are a couple runs I lost to that. I think I lost my first runway SA23 to that. Um, yeah, the recording got messed up. Um, it, and like recording any percent runs was just a little too long. It was like half the time I did a full any percent run, I would lose the video because of frame drops mm -hmm. or it would just freak out partway through. I lost a lot of runs, a lot of weird glitches. I got better at it as time went on, like keeping uh, like, on like, it. Like, uh, uh, basically like finessing the technology. Yeah, I had, I very much had to finesse it to get it not to be complete garbage. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's, there's a part, if you've ever watched my month of Aztec video, there's a part where I lose my Aztec agent PB because uh, I didn't like the, the recordings like stopped. Um, and there was never a moment where I didn't hit record. That didn't happen. Mm -hmm. It was always I hit record, then something went wrong. Or I hit stop recording when I got a run, and then the program froze and crashed and I lost the video. Like uh -huh, there, it was uh -huh. always something to do with this capture card. I eventually switched to um I got an uh I got a CRT, big old 27 inch Sony CRT. Fantastic fantastic tv it's currently in my garage because it's too big to put anywhere now um but i switched over to that and then so instead of the hdmi going um straight into the tv the hdmi just went in to the capture card it didn't have to go through i split the rca and one of the rcas went into the uh went into the capture card and then the other went into a VCR, which then went into the TV. So then I had a backup VCR to help record, which was nice. Lost a lot fewer runs when <laughs> yeah, I made that. Yeah. yeah, again, like that sounds uh, that sounds like mildly stressful, like not knowing if your run is actually gonna get recorded or it, there's is it I think it's my bunker seventeen. And bunker seventeen drove me up a wall um was that old strap yes old okay. strap behind the table too oh, like okay. yes it drove me up a wall i finally got it um and in my reaction you hear me freaking out like i'm like i'm excited that i got it but like i'm not gonna freak out until the video saves uh, like i have to hit yeah, stop yeah, yeah. recording it has to say video saved it has to not crash and then that happened, and then I freak out. Mm -hmm. The video mm -hmm. saved. The video. <laughs> so that's oh, another. Cool. That's that's why I say that because I I lost a lot of runs to that at that at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Um, then, God, I'm just going through my capture setup because it's just that's just that much of a mess. Um, th that stayed that way for a little while. Um, I eventually when I got the CRT. The laptop went on the floor instead because the CRT was on the floor. Um, and then, as Eric was alluding to earlier, I had a like a tall, like hanging mirror that I had on the back of my closet door. Um, we eventually figured out that we could put the mirror next to the TV, and then you could see me <laughs> playing from behind. Uh huh. So yeah, yeah those are the that's mirror streams. Pretty, that's, that's actually pretty genius. Yeah, so everyone loves the mirror streams. There's mm -hmm. there's not very many recordings from that era, but oh, there are a couple. I would love to there see are that. A couple, that sounds there awesome. are a couple clips. There's uh, I I use it at the beginning of uh, I think I use that one clip. It's me playing Super Mario sixty four. I use it at the beginning of um both part eleven and Fox. Let me see if I can get a timestamp. Shout out to the Pokemon Coliseum official soundtrack. Everyone that knows that, you're the real ones. Wait, uh, what's that in regards to? That's the the opening track um, during the opening credits of Part 11. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Is from the Pokemon Coliseum official soundtrack. It's a great, great track. Oh, come on, go faster. Eric says, shout out to the SM64 clip where Adam gets absolutely dunked on during Rainbow Ride. That's that's the one I'm talking about, Eric. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't know if I have that clip preserved anywhere in its full length, but I definitely have a bit of it. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
So yeah, I'll send this over to you real quick. I mean, I don't know if you want to just put it on like on like a virtual camera and then you can like narrate it if you want. Oh, let me see if I can do that. <laughs> I don't have that set up right now, fortunately. Uh, okay. Uh, I can. It's I, at. I, I sent you the link, and it's at one o. It's at like one o five. It's super early. Okay. But you can you can see the the wonderful mirror setup. All right, let, let, let me try. And this is this is the SM sixty four clip that Eric's talking about. Okay. Oh. All right. Give me a second. But I, I always had a surprising number of viewers during those webcam streams. Oops. Uh, so it, oh, is it the very beginning of, uh, of part 11? Yeah, I, I sent you the link. Yeah, and yeah, no, I got it. I'm just making sure. It was, it and it's at 105, like 104, 105, 105 somewhere 105, in there. Okay. Got you, got you. And you'll, you'll be able to see it. It's a very quick clip, but... It's, yeah, I think it's a, one of the few surviving clips from the mirror streams. Uh, okay. I hope the people can see this. I can see it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so these are the these are the classic webcam streams. Yeah. You can see a bunch of the times I got during the webcam stream. Oh, okay, got it. See, yeah, right there. You so, can see the mirror. So that's a mirror on the right that actually, side. That's, that's actually that's genius, dude. That's really good. Yeah, 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 I forget. I forget who suggested it to me. I'm sure someone will claim credit for that. But someone's like, dude, you uh -huh. should put just a mirror next uh -huh. to your TV. Do you have a mirror? And I'm like, actually, I do have a mirror. Wow, dude, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's that's the absolutely genius setup. Eric, uh, Eric, that Eric was the meme god. Still, yes, still is. That was that was the peak. That was the peak right there. Um. Yeah, old blue, blue Eric. That was blue Eric before red Eric before purple Eric. Um, what happened? So, yeah. So eventually, um, uh, God, what was the guy's name? I think his name was Swagmaster420. Um, came in to watch my stream one day. <laughs> Excellent name. I know, right? <laughs> and he's like, "Do you not?" have like a good enough pc for streaming is like no i have a macbook so this is really i promise i have tried everything this is the absolute best i can do with this setup and um he dm'd me on uh discord he's like i have an old pc just gathering dust in my garage oh, wow. like if you want it i'll just i'll just send it to you and i'm like that is ludicrously generous but i guess i'll take it Dude, sure wow and so he sent me it, it's it's an older windows model it's it was um i think it originally ran windows 7 mm -hmm. um and so that's what i ended up getting to work on it i got windows 7 running on it um so shout, and that was when to swagmaster 420 i something like that mm -hmm. I, I believe i remember there being swag and 420 in the name mm -hmm. i can't for the life of me remember the rest of it mm -hmm, okay um but regardless that was around I I that PC came in, I got Windows 7 rolling on it. Now I could finally get an actual good capture card. So I finally got a GV USB. I could finally have that running, finally have standard quality. Um I was using Amarec to record. Mm -hmm. Um so everyone that's ever used Amarec, I did know the pain momentarily. Um I couldn't use OBS Studio because it was Windows 7 and it wasn't compatible. It wasn't working. Um, so I used the old OBS, like the original OBS, in order to stream. Um, and that was a relatively brief period of using old OBS to stream and Amarec to record. Um, I got a few runs during that time. Um, there's a very specific capture quality to look for in those times because Amarec produces 
very specific type of capture quality video. Um, and all my videos were in 4x3. Like, so on YouTube, they're 4x3. Um, because that's just how Amarek was set up. Compared to my more modern stuff, which is in 16x9, but the game's in 4x3. Uh-huh, okay. Um, so you can always look for that to find them. Like my Cradle 34s, my SA0034 are like that. Um, there were some times towards the end of that cycle where... Um, the PC stopped working well, like the original OBS would just stop working every once in a while. The streams were occasionally very laggy. Um, and so at, there was a point where I gave up on using OBS to stream on that PC. Mm -hmm. I started the webcam stream again, but I was still recording on Amarek. So okay. like my my the 34s that I just mentioned, uh, I got on a webcam stream but recorded on Amarek because that was around the time OBS was working. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So that was summer of 2018. So I'd been in the Elite like six months-ish, five, six months. And um, that summer, I worked, uh, for lands I worked for the landscaping team at my university. It was my first summer staying on campus. Um, and so I had saved up some money through working landscaping all summer. So then September rolls around and I decide it's finally time to build myself a PC. So I built myself a PC, um, optimized pretty heavily for streaming. Um, I have a pretty decent GPU. It's the PC I'm using now. Mm -hmm. um, I have a pretty decent GPU. Like I'm not super bottlenecked anywhere, um, but I got a pretty top of the line processor for the time just because that's the best part for streaming. Um, and that's when I moved into the current era of capture. Um, I'd use my GV USB directly into OBS to stream mm -hmm. and record. Classic. Could use the I used the splitter still to go into the VCR, so I always had VCR backup, which then went into my uh, CRT TVs. Um, and so that's that's been the state of affairs pretty much since. September 2019 when I finally got the thing working. I think the mm -hmm. first thing I streamed was one of the first things I streamed was Jungle, I think. So um, you pretty much had that set up since you started Fock? Essentially, yeah. <laughs> so the since the first run I got for it was Cavs SA 119. That oh, was, okay. I, had, yeah. I, I had I had the setup at that the time the in setup. February. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yep, and so that's that's been the state of affairs pretty much ever since. I did get... I got a few runs for Part 11. Um, I went to stay at my parents' house for like a week around Christmas um, in 2018. Um, and I brought... Um, I had gotten... Had I gotten a new laptop at the time? No. I hadn't gotten a new laptop. So when I was at my parents, I used my old recording setup with this and my MacBook. Mm -hmm. um, and that's actually where I got uh, Runway 34 on Double O, which was my big Strat Untied. Mm -hmm. um, the closing part from Part 11. I got that at my parents on this. So that's why that one's also in the good old 16 by 9 stretch. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, but, but I recorded it on VCR. So I have an actual... VCR recording of that one too. That isn't very ugly. Uh -huh, so, uh -huh, got you. Mm. So, and, and well, and so, um, uh, oh, and, and is it just that PB that you've got with that setup, or were there any others at my parents? We well, yeah, like the the new old setup. Oh, with this, with the laptop yeah, at my parents, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I, I really only use that for like a week. Um, okay. I think, I know I got Runway 00 there. Um, I think I got my statue agent time for part 11. I think it was a 221. I think, let me double check. I got a statue run at my parents. Yeah, 221. And then I think I got a frig double O as well. That's yeah. My 113. That was uh Stevie Wonder superstition was what I put to that Wait, one. What what's T L Y G A S or G A F? 
I have no idea. Thank you. Sometimes you just have to let Eric ramble, and then eventually it works itself out. Thank you. Let's give a fuck. Or, or no, wait. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. Um, what, what would you say is your proudest PB? Oh, that's always a hard... A turn, oh, turn like you give a fuck. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh... Oh, no, that's, um... I know what Eric's referring to. I did a tutorial for how to do the runway two-tap strat. Um... I think I think it was just turn you fucking idiot or something like that. Uh-huh. It was it was much simpler than that, but that was the strategy I used. Uh-huh. It, yeah, it was something like that, Eric. I know I know what you're referring to, um, because the whole thing like bad Carl was the one that like I guess he was bad Carl at the time, uh-huh. um, not anymore. At the time he was bad Carl. Uh-huh. Um, he had been like Carl. the pioneer for the two tap strategy on runway double O. And he ran so far down the runway, like so excessively far down the runway, like way more than actually needed, which is why he lost so much time. And so I'm just like, was that that 36 or 35? I think he got 36 out of that. Uh Um, And then I think Berg got 35 and then I got 34. And then Berg, like a year ago or something, got 33 just because he's Berg. Uh Um, That's what he wants. Yeah. So, uh, that was definitely it for a while. Was that runway 0034? Um, I definitely don't think it would be now. I don't, I've got a couple really solid PD times, but nothing that would beat anything on the GE side. Um,. I would lean towards that Cavs SA-115 just because with how early I got that, like, I got that and I hadn't even been playing a year. And it's still a really solid time. I mean, it's been Mm -hmm. bopped. It's been bopped a fair number of times since I got it. But, I mean, it was 2019. Like, it's only lost, you know, six points since 2019. Wow. So. Impressive. that's, That's remained a very solid time. Um... I would put that over any of my world records, honestly. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the rest of my times page, trying to think if there's something that pops. Now, so many of my like ninety point times, I like caked, so I don't have that same passion behind it. My mm-hmm. Egypt runs are solid, straight forty fives. So that was a fun grind. That was COVID. I grinded those out. Early 2020, for, after for, COVID hit. For, for, for runway double O, so I think something like Clem, Ace, and Mark all have 37, I think. So I've always wanted to go for 36 at some point. Which strat, which strat do you recommend to get 36? Double tap, 100%. Double tap. Okay. Right. It's so, it's so, like, it takes a little bit of time to learn, but I, I have a tutorial for it. Okay. Um, I'll check it out. So I, it's not that hard. You, you, and 36 is not what you'll end up getting. You'll get 34 or 35. Okay. Like, you, cool. you have to really do it wrong to get 36, <laughs> which is okay. why I kind of make fun of it in my tutorial. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is, Eric, it's definitely turn right away, you fucking idiot. I believe that is the name of the strat. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but yeah, two, two tap was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun playing it. Um, it's nowhere near as degenerate as the like double lean strat is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, for like twenty seven, twenty eight. So two taps the way to go. I actually I duped thirty four on J. Wait, so um, the two tap is so. that the is that the R tap? Yeah, that's okay. R tap. Okay. There's okay. two of them, which is why I call it the two tap because you uh-huh. do two R taps. Okay. Uh-huh. You do an R tap for the battery and then for the last drone. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got so. it. Mm. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it's so yeah, for the the in between. So you after the battery and then the the first drone, you just do a normal throw for that one. Yeah. 
Okay. It's normal throw, tap, normal throw, tap. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Assuming I have not completely forgotten everything. Because, so, I mean, I haven't played that level since <laughs> 2018. Uh, uh, so, so speaking of, uh, of tutorials, can you tell me how the um, Beginner's Guide to Goldeneye came about? Because like, I, I have to say, I don't know if you'll agree with me, but I, I would say I think that that's your... Um, um, I would say I think that, that that's your greatest contribution to Goldeneye, honestly. I, like the sheer I would number be inclined of people who have yeah, um, who have who have gone through that as their introduction is just huge. That and those are I'm talking about my most watched videos on my YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, those are definitely my um, those are easily the next several. Yeah. So yeah, um, would you would you agree with that assessment? I I would. Yes, um, most certainly. Um, let me see if I can find my current stats on that. And YouTube Studio keeps changing nonsense, and I can't find where it is anywhere. Playlists. There we go. Yeah, so the first part of that has 5,000 views. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then 2,000, 2,000, and then part four has 4,000. So I guess more people were interested in that. That's pretty insane. Um, Even though there's like 2,500 members in the entire community, like that's, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was late, later on in 2018. Um, I had benefited greatly from the like single level tutorials that existed at the time. Um, there's a lot more now than there was then. Um, there just weren't as many at the time. Wotus had done quite a few. Um, uh, just, Luke just like, had done like, a couple. Like, as in general beginner tutorials, or no, as in individual any, levels. Any that was the yeah. that was like. That was pretty much all there was. There was there's there's Goose's like any percent tutorial, but that's not Yeah, it's not the same. That's not what we do here. We mm -hmm. do ILs. Mm -hmm. Um so there was that, but um so I saw a need. I'm like, you know what? I I like teaching. I have picked up a ton of information about this game over the past, you know, seven, eight months that I've been in the community. Um I like putting together videos because mm -hmm. um, I had done, I did video edits for like all my big PBs. Um, I'd done the longer edit with the month of Aztec video. Like I'd done a lot of stuff and I enjoyed doing it. I still wasn't very good at it. I was stuck in iMovie, so I had very limited options. Mm -hmm. um, so the whole, the whole speedrunning guide is done in iMovie. Um, I didn't switch to Vegas until. Um, part way through 2019. That was right around the time when I started doing the first Fock edit was when I switched to Vegas. Um, but so I enjoyed doing all that. And I'm like, you know what? This is something that I think should exist. So I, I was talking with Icy um, trying to figure out how we should how to do it. And so I basically put together the scripts. Icy would proofread, help me out with a few other things. Um, and then threw the whole thing together. Um, I don't really remember it taking terribly much time, so I feel like I got it done relatively quickly. Um, honestly, that was far enough ago. I don't remember all of it that that okay. super well. I'm surprised but it was surprised basically to say that because like it's a it's not it's almost as if it was just you know a one it was a whole series and obviously like yeah it's, yeah. it's a it's a ten part video series yeah, yeah, exactly. like and it's like there there's a decent there's a good chunk of content here going through all sorts of stuff yeah um. So, and I know I, I always suggest that when people ask me, it's like, well, what, do you, how do I get into this? It's like, I put together a video series and mm -hmm. I know people have shared it left, right and center yeah, yeah. pretty much ever since I made it. Um, so I'm, I'm very glad that it's had as far of a reach as it is. And honestly, that's a, that's a like, and I'll probably get into this more at some point, but like, there's so much emphasis put on the runs that people have achieved and all that sort of stuff. Like they got these untied, they got these world records. 
And there's so many other parts that go into building a community that mm -hmm. I have no shame in, like, if I'd never get a crazy untied, a crazy record, um, I have no shame in, like, this being my legacy. Like, this mm -hmm. is the thing that people know me for. This is my biggest contribution to the community because yeah. it, so many people have told me, it's like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I know you. You you did the tutorial series. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Hell great. Yeah, That's awesome. So everyone will get concerned about legacy, especially in the next probably, you know, five, six years as we approach the inevitable heat death of Goldeneye. Mm -hmm. um, I think so many people will get wrapped up in legacy that I think that this is this is plenty like this is this is good to be remembered by like even if i dropped off the face of the planet tomorrow like mm -hmm. this is still good and honestly i am insanely impressed with how accurate it pretty much all is like uh -huh. so much of it is still good like yeah. it really has not it's, been significantly outdated since that is, 2018 that it stands up well yeah so mm -hmm. And a lot of a lot of the things are still true. Like so many people like don't put as much emphasis on the boring four anymore. But like there's still really good beginner times. Like they've yeah. largely remained unchanged. There's the new bunker seventeen strat. But like honestly, you should go for bunker eighteen with the old strat to get your movement down and better, and mm -hmm. then switch to the new strat for seventeen. So there's not that many big things that have changed. Um and then I did I did that the interviews with people in that last yeah, episode, yeah, yeah, did. which got a lot of, a lot of extra perspectives, a lot of additional things put in there, um, including from several players that are no longer part of the community for one reason or another. So that one's maybe the most dated, but like, there's still good stuff in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's still good players. Like they, um, yeah, it's not as if the advice was bad. No, Yeah. no, so, I always, <laughs> it's so funny, that's what everyone thinks about a lot of the time when they think about me. I've, like, completely forgotten that it exists, because, mm -hmm. like, I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I just kind of made it and let it loose into the world. Yeah, man. So, so what, what's your, um, um, well, I, I don't know. This is a bit, a bit of a, a, bit of a, a, a vague question. So you can tell me if you want, if you want me to, to, be, to be more specific. But like, what's your? Um, how have you found? Um, I don't know being part of the Goldmine community in general. Because like, there are some people who, um, like, they play the game and they, I don't know. There, <laughs> there are some people. Some people who play the game and they kind of just feel worse for playing it. Like they end up basically just kind of getting addicted. They just kind of end up kind of grinding and then like, I don't know, kind of smashing their head against the wall and kind of like burning out. And there are some people who who seem to have a reasonably healthy relationship with it. You seem to have a pretty healthy relationship with it. So I definitely say that overall you seem to um, uh, be glad that you found the game in the community. Without, oh, without certainly. Anything. Like, yeah, it's it's a classic. Like, I wouldn't trade any of it for the world, like even the mm -hmm. stupid stupid level that is cradle and the stupid stupid level that is control agent uh -huh, like yeah. um i've had a ton of fun and again for a decent for a couple of years there this was a good chunk of my social life mm -hmm. um through the people on my stream and the people in my discord like that became regular viewers of my stream who i now consider good friends mm -hmm. like i've personally visited quite a few of them on my worldwide tour uh -huh. um that i took yeah. a couple summers ago now um so it it's good it's a it's a good pastime for me um it, it kind of helped me move on from a lot of the things that were going on in my life before i started um move into a better place so i ultimately nothing really but positive side effects mm -hmm. um mostly because my hands are still healthy so i haven't <laughs> haven't actually attained any debilitating injury no from this yet. just yet yeah, so that's that's another reason why I want to limit my playing because I I never really had any like hand issues or anything like when I was actively playing very frequently, um, like multiple hours a day in 2018, 2019. Um, but I 
I know that as I get older, I don't want to put myself in that situation. Mm -hmm. Like, I mm -hmm. still need to be able to use my hands. So mm -hmm. that's another reason why I want to limit my amount of playing, just as a health, as a very, very precautionary health. Do, do, you, um, do you think that maybe Control and Service 00 will be kind of your final bosses for the game, or have you still got anything over the horizon? I will always be able to make goals for myself. Mm -hmm. There's always things I want to do. I have, I have always been a full game player. I have so rarely focused on getting a world record on one level or, you know, I've never spent any time, any meaningful time going for an untied. Like if you ta if you tallied the amount of time I spent going for a non meme untied. Mm -hmm. Okay. That total timer would probably read somewhere in the realm of like seven, eight minutes. Uh -huh, like okay. it's not something I have ever invested serious time into. Mm -hmm. um, maybe like I'm like, I'll go for runway 0027 and I'll do two minutes of the two tap strat. It's like, well, this sucks. <laughs> um, stuff like that. Like, 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 like do, do, you, do you feel like it's just kind of not in your personality? Like you're not uh, you're not a you're not you know you're just not in a kind of an ultra ultra degen grind kind of person yeah that's i mean it's part of where goldeneye is now like if i came into goldeneye like years earlier i definitely would have gone for something because there was more room mm -hmm. for those things to happen on me on the we're point. at the point now where you you pretty much have to degenerate to get anywhere mm -hmm. um with an untied like you look at some of the recent untied grinds and some of the ongoing untied grinds and you're like wow this is stupid like this uh -huh, is so uh -huh. silly yeah. to see this much time going into it so like it, it's kind of it's past the prime of untied so to speak mm -hmm. um and again i've always i've always been a full game player i've played the full game i have one of the first things i did um as a leader was get a video up for every single level in mm -hmm. Goldeneye, and then eventually every single level in PD. I am I have one of the most complete video archives of my PB history out of any leader, mm -hmm. um, just because of how well I've kept the books and how like I've been taking videos from the very beginning. Essentially, like that's why Goose used so many of my old PRs oh, yeah, as course. example videos in oh, Speed Wars. Yeah, classic. Which that was that was a roller coaster for me since Speedlord brought me into the game. Mm -hmm. It's wild to like oh, I'm seeing my own runs now yeah, as the example. You, 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 were re you were regular on the show, essentially, yeah. Mm -hmm. With my with my earlier with my early runs, and so I always mm -hmm. I always looked bad because um, I was never doing very well right. um, in those runs. But it, it is what it is. Like every everyone that was part of the community knew that I did have good runs to show for myself. Mm -hmm. um but i i always played the full game i never sat down and really grinded the crap out of individual like a single level for super long <laughs> periods of time like i i like the variety like and goldeneye has goldeneye and perfect dark have a lot of variety to offer like there's a lot of different levels different types of levels different strategies are you into DLTK? all sorts of different oh, sorry, are you into ltk at all <laughs> i've dabbled like i've considered like Part of me coming back, I'm like, you know what I should do? I'm coming back. Like, I need to get back into it again. I should just go for all the LTK DLTK completes. That seems yeah. like a really cool goal to go mm -hmm. to. Like, something I would be into doing. Um, Because I like all that strategizing and stuff. Yeah. So I might end up, like, actually going for it. The problem, January is one of the busiest months for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the Elite decided that that was the best month for Did LTK. Leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the worst month for me to have LTK League. Mm -hmm. I would love to do LTK League any other month of the year, pretty much. Except mm -hmm. maybe in the fall. But January is so... I spend so much extra time in January to do a variety of things. Like, have you got any LTK times? Oh, yeah. I've As I've said, I've dabbled, like... Um, I got the dual... The dual LTK records because uh -huh. of the dual true ending, which mm -hmm. I helped popularize. Um... I did some MBR in PD as well. I got Cradle 34 when it was world record. Thanks, Frost Tops. Um, I've played the Surface 2, both difficulties, because that's kind of one everyone does. I, I would like occasionally just like, you know what? I feel like messing around. I'm just going to try for like an LTK run on like mm -hmm. a level I was grinding at the time. So I have I have a spattering 
but I never seriously seriously grinded for anything outside of duel. Mm-hmm. So, so like, when you say that you you feel as though the uh, inevitable heat death of gold is going to occur, like what do you uh, what do you mean? As in, there will be no untieds left. That's probably because that's so many people, and I think this is personally, I think this is a problem with the elite. So many people get blinders mm-hmm. for the untieds. That's like all they value, all they care about. And then people will turn around and say, no, I don't. I value more than that. It's like, no, you don't. Uh-huh. Like, that's really all that you care about. Um, and I think that's part of why the elite has been so much quieter lately. I think it's because there's no, there's not as many untieds on the table. Like, there's so many levels that are at theoretical maximums or like, like, not necessarily theoretical maximums, but just, like, the grind that would be required to beat them is, like, absurd. Yeah. Or the skill level is absurd. Like, and props to the community for getting it to this point. But, I mean, part of that will be its own... It, it's it's a double-edged sword. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's a great accomplishment, but also it does lead itself to less interest in playing because that mm-hmm. has been the value for so long that unless we change those values, then we're we're gonna run out of motivation. What kind of what kind of values would you like to see to replace that sort of thing? World records, spreading them out. I mean, world records should still be valued, obviously. Um, and as times get more and more max, ties are gonna be more important. Like there are some ridiculous records that would be insane to see people go for slays, like. Mm-hmm. If if that's the next thing down, like untieds are number one in most people's eyes, slays, untied slays then are going to be number two. And so there's mm-hmm. plenty of good opportunities for that should people decide to go for them. Um, there's plenty of lesser tied records that would be good to go for. Um, I think even just working your way up the rankings should be more highly valued than it is. Like, don't get me wrong, Callie's a great player. I love Callie to death. Mm-hmm. I wish he would fill out his fucking times page. Uh-huh, okay. Like, that is one of the most annoying things to me when people don't fill it out. Just because I loved filling out the times page. Like, mm-hmm. I love getting points. Like, one of my first goals in the Elite was, like, I'm going to get points on every level. And then I did it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get double-digit points on every level. I did it. I'm going to get up to this level, like, with every level. I'm going to get to this point. Like, those have always been my goals. Yeah. So, it's just, I don't think in the same way as many other people. And I know that. I've always played the game kind of by my rules, by my standards. And that's been true for for forever. That's been true since the beginning. Yo, Doggo says, uh, apparently you gave him a massive raid back when you uh, back when he was new in the elite. Do you remember that? I'm sure I'm sure I did. I I raided a lot of people. That was, that I, was I always tried I always tried to make sure I hosted back when hosting was a thing. Um I always tried to make sure I hosted or rated someone if I had a decent audience on a given night. And I, I would often I would often be somewhere like in the high teens, 20s-ish, which for a Golden Knight stream is pretty good. Especially because I was very, so very rarely going for like a world record or something. So. Yeah, I, I think I, I think the point, you, the point you make about, I don't know, like I, I think, yeah, just making having the community have, have values that are more kind of welcoming to new players, I think would probably would probably be a really good idea. Because um, I think that, I don't know, just having, I don't know, just having more stuff, like, I, I don't even think there is an achievement for having points on every level. Like, that would be a really good one, I think. No, but that that would be a good one. Like, yeah. that's that's the sort of thing, like, spread yourself out, play the game. Like, mm-hmm. the whole game exists. I... That would be my hope to see more people do that. Like, and again, there's plenty of levels that suck. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Mm-hmm. Like, if I never had to play Forget Agent again in my entire life, I would be a very happy person. But mm-hmm. unfortunately, everyone and their mother decided to get 23 recently. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> I'm currently sitting with that. With 24 is my worst time. Mm-hmm. On my time page, did, so did, I'll have to deal with that. If eventually. I remember correctly, did did you at some point during top were you close to top ten? Yes, I. So I was keeping track of my point totals as I was going and getting the times. Um, I pretty much had a running, uh, 
spreadsheet, like a Google spreadsheet with my up uh, with my true times page um, that I kept up to date. And um, so I could estimate my placement. Obviously, it didn't account for bops or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, bops were such a small amount of adjustment that it wouldn't have really adjusted my placement anyway. Um, so there was a point, I think it was like August of 2020, where um, I, I believe I got a PB on stream, I think. Um, and that finally got me to 11th. Mm -hmm. So technically, and people will say, oh, revisionist history, who cares? Mm -hmm. um, I If I unhoarded at that moment, I would have been 11th. Uh -huh. So that that's technically my technically my peak. Is stuff, so, is, is stuff like top 10 or top 15, is that meaningful to you or, or not? I have always kind of aimed to go for top 10. Um, I would that was originally one of the goals of Fock was to hoard into top 10. Mm -hmm. Um, that obviously didn't come to fruition because I burnt out and stopped playing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also like Timmy and Pogo unhoarded into top 10, which kind of makes life a lot harder. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that's no longer on my explicit goals list. I think there's times that I want to get and get off my back. Like I want to get control 357. I want to get S100148. Um, there's some of the common world records that I don't have that I want to go for, that kind of stuff. Um, and if I happen to get top 10 along the way, bully for me. If not, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, like, so. <clears throat> um, uh, to go back to the stuff about um, and I'm making things like like more more uh, friendly for like for, for like for new players. Have you got any other any other ideas with, with regards to that? Because I think that we could definitely use some like fresh ideas for how to get and keep new players in the community. I don't I don't know that it's like I don't know if it's a problem that we can fix by actively doing something like mm -hmm. there's like a fix like. You put you add this thing or you change this thing. Like there's been a lot of talk about changing the point system, mm -hmm. like adding more points <clears throat> so that you can get points with weaker times. I disagree with that. I think that's silly. Like you can get plenty of points with very easy times yeah, still. Agree. Like Dam fifty three, like <clears throat> assuming no it's wild strategy comes been. out, Dam fifty three will probably always be on the table. <laughs> and if yeah. I'm wrong, great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. There's some wild new strategy that made 5251 very easy for people to get. But based on what I can see, 53 will always be on the table. So it's like that that's always going to be there. Yeah. Like we we I have agree. a point system to get that separation. So it works very well to do what it and, needs and, to and do. And I have to say I never hear that from new players. I never hear people like oh, I I wish that um uh people would make it easier to get points. Like Yeah. They they see that as the level they need to strive exactly, to. So that exactly. The new players we get then have a different perspective of where they need to get, and then they push themselves to get there. That's mm -hmm. why so many players came in in like 2018, mm -hmm. 2019, and then went nuts because standards were so much higher than they were back in the old and, days. And you know, this is funny because you were saying that people were saying, oh, you shouldn't focus so much on the boring four. Maybe the boring four were the perfect times to go for because they're because they're gonna they're basically gonna be worth points forever. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're they're like very, 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 very safe times. Mm -hmm. Like even in the Renaissance of Goldeneye in like 2019, <laughs> yeah. like they those those times still stayed nice and steady. Like mm -hmm. obviously, there's been some more damage done to bunker and archives. Yeah, but, but even but then, like, they're not going down to zero anytime soon. <laughs> no, absolutely not. So it's it's not that's yeah. As I said, I don't think there's like an easy fix. I think it's more of like a mentality thing. Mm -hmm. Like so much of the elite is founded on untied or die. Yeah. Like that's it. Yeah. And people will say that they don't think it that way and then they act that way. Yeah. So that that's I I don't that that's not an easy change. That's that's a cultural shift. I mm -hmm. think that would need to happen in changing like what we value. Um, well, well, I mean, what about stuff like you know actually having 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 different types of achievements, like where players can actually have stuff to aim for, you know, like is, uh, 
I don't know, finding if we if we had more of a kind of structure where it was like, oh, if you do this relatively easy thing, you get this thing, you know, you actually get a something cool if you something notable if you get the boring four if you get points on one every time or if you get i don't know um whatever whatever right like yeah get like, and, but we kind of make them a bit more official because at the moment it's kind of like untieds have that kind of status because they're just so they're like the most official thing you can get right whereas if you get a boring four it's just kind of like ah just whatever whereas if there was a specific um I don't know what what's it called like achievement unlocks kind of thing that you get. Yeah, I don't know. It could be more uh, popular. That's been thrown around a lot too, mm-hmm. and I mean there has been a lot of achievements added. I noticed uh, almost took, every time. Yeah, I don't find them particularly uh, riveting. No, they're not. Honest. They're not. They're not wild, but there's some. There's some decent. Yeah, stuff I, on I, there. I, 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 I would. I think they should probably be re rejigged a bit just so just so there's less but yeah they're, but they're more meaningful that's been that's been brought up so many times mm-hmm. since i joined the elite that that's that's been brought up a lot but okay, I, I again i honestly i think it's a cultural thing okay. like i i it's but it's not going to be a quick change oh, oh yeah I, i'm not i'm not saying quick but I, I mean the reason why i bring these up isn't just it will be a quick fix but as in that will be the kind of thing that could potentially bring about a cultural change um, it would help yeah, yeah. We just kind of nudge things along in the right direction, potentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Mm, um, so, do you, what's you got any kind of predictions for uh, Madman Fletcher in twenty twenty four? No idea. <laughs> okay. I'd like I'd like Fair to enough. get my fact times improved with the Dokler strap. That's what I have been playing. Um. It'd be nice to get a couple of the fox monkeys off my back, like. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't. I can tell you for sure. You never know what's going to happen with Goldeneye. Like, if you had told me right when I joined the elite in 2018, like that I would be top 50 in well under a year, that I would have a a huge unhorde under my belt in under a year, that I would have, you know, I think I had seven, eight world records that I tied. By the time I'd been in a year, um, I had Cavs SA 115 in another year. Like, if you told me all that when I joined, I would have said, you're a very silly person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and that that's definitely not going to happen. Mm-hmm. So, who's who's to say? So I, uh, It would be nice, but all right, it's gold so, so, what about, what about some more, some more, uh, I don't know. Yeah, some more general predictions. <laughs> Like, like, like for like for the coming year. If we, if we, uh, if I boot up, if I pull up the stream in uh, January of 2025, um, what are the predictions that I'm going to be wowed by for them having come true? No idea. I am Nothing. completely <laughs> out of touch with who is doing what okay, now. <laughs> um, and I feel like I don't see that many people out and about playing actively right now. Like mm-hmm. maybe I'm just online at the wrong times, but it like I think this will end up being a very quiet year in the elite, and I think we're due for many more. But oh, really? obviously, I'd love to be proved wrong. Like mm-hmm. everyone's like, "Oh yeah, we're running out of untides. Like it's gonna be a quiet year, and then something stupid happens, and then mm-hmm. more stupid things happen, and then Ace continues to breathe and exist." Yeah, yeah. Um. So, who who literally knows? Mm-hmm. Right. But that's a, that's a, that's a fair that's, that's a fair response. Like if you don't know, you don't know. So, um, yeah, there's. Oh. It's too hard. Way too hard to say. So I mean, I've been I've been you know uh, up so up to now. I've been asking all the questions, bringing up all the topics. Is there anything that you would want to say to now that you've got this colossal platform from which to um, from which to p- proclaim things? Like I know, uh-uh. you've, you've got all the community watching. People will probably watch this afterwards. Like, what do you want to say to, uh, like, to everybody? If there's anything. Hmm. Well, I have a question for you. Okay. Can you guess? Can you guess what the first speed run I ever watched was? Um. Well, 
You I'd be very impressed if you could. I mean, weren't you saying that um, it was the Jungle SA speed law that you were watching first? I mean, speed, oh, speed run, run of like anything. Ever. Oh, um, is this something that I could realistically guess, or is this going to be something so obscenely obscure that uh... it's a very popular game? Okay. This this was this was before. This was even before speedrunning really hit the mainstream. Would it, would I would have, been... I would have watched this. God, what year would that have been? I would have watched this run in either 2013 or 2014. Okay, so could it have been that very famous Super Mario Brothers three run? Nope. No, it wasn't that one. Okay, uh, Super Metroid. Nothing Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um, Does Eric know this? I've talked about this before with Eric. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm sure Eric has a better have. idea. Um, can you give me any more clues? Wait, what about what about GTA? You're getting closer. Like, um, would it be like a, one of those um, Call of Duty target test things? No, no, I've never been a I've never been a big FPS guy, honestly. Right. What about like Red Dead? Which is funny. Which is funny because I speech run Goldeneye. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, Dragster. This is Um Not Dragster. Uh, Red Dead. The original. Nope. Um, I don't know, man. I think I'm gonna be I'm gonna be here guessing all night. Actually, it was an early Dark Souls speed run. Uh huh. Okay. Was it, it one was, of the no hits? Was it one of the no hits or just a normal one? No, it was just a regular regular speed run. It was a magic build speed run, specifically. What does that mean? Um and what, what, I what, what, found what, what, it because what, 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 what magic build? Uh, it was a sorcery build. What do you mean, um, what do you mean by build? Like, have you played any of the Souls games? No. Have you played an RPG like ever? <laughs> Skyrim or anything? Uh, I played Skyrim on my like uh, flatmates Xbox at university a few times. So, so when you play when you play a game like that, you can put um, investments into certain stats oh, okay, to make your yeah, character yeah, better yeah. in certain okay, ways. Okay, right. Like specialize in certain equipment. Okay, that sort yeah, of yeah. thing. I mean, I've played so, like D and D yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So build is just describing the character. Okay. Like right. how mm -hmm. you how you build the character. Mm -hmm. Um. So I was playing through Dark Souls at the time, and I was uh, getting pretty lost and was losing motivation to play through it. And I was trying to find a video to get me through this one area. And so I was just searching on YouTube looking for this and looking for something. And I stumbled across this, you know, hour and a half long Dark Souls 1 speed run. Because mm -hmm. this was long. Like, Dark Souls now has, like, wrong warps and all sorts of nonsense to cut the game down super short. This was before, like, any of this was discovered. I guarantee I could not find this run, even if I tried. Mm -hmm. Like, it's probably not even up anymore. Um, it had, like, less than 100 views or something. Like, uh -huh. it was very, very, very unknown. Um, but so I watched... I ended up watching the whole thing, because I was just fascinated by all of it. Um... And then give it another year or two, and Summoning Salt popped up into my recommendations. Like, this was right at the beginning of him uploading stuff. Uh -huh. um, could probably get a specific. Yeah, I guess I could just scroll backwards on his. Wouldn't it have been, it wouldn't it have been uh, Punch Out, the first one that he did? I don't think it would have been Punch Out, but it would have been one of his very early ones. Mm -hmm. I bet it was 120 star. Oh, yeah. I'm betting. <clears throat> no, so that would have been what six years ago it says yeah 2017 so that popped up in my recommended that would have been when i was in college um and so right around then was when speed running was really kind of hitting a bit more of the mainstream there were a lot more runs for a lot more things and around that time it became tradition for me every time i finished a game i would watch a speed run assuming the speed run wasn't ridiculously long mm-hmm so I pretty much, and I still do it now, pretty much any time I finish a game for the first time, I will watch uh -huh, through cool. a speed run. That's cool. Um, sometimes, sometimes multiple categories, especially I'm much better versed in speed running now than I was then. Mm -hmm. Like back then I would just find like blank 
whatever speed run and then i'd watch the first thing that showed up because i didn't know any better mm -hmm. and sometimes they'd be weird categories or wildly out of date world records or stuff like that um now i'm much more thorough i find the leaderboard i find the most popular run i, mm -hmm. I watch the world record for that most likely um i always try to find a run with like either live commentary or like commentated mm -hmm. um to give me a better idea of what's going yeah, on because nice. i love like so many of the YouTubers I follow now are those that like dive into speedruns, like mm -hmm. uh, Tomato Anus and Summoning Salt, and um, Speed Docs who have fallen off the face of the planet, um, all those sorts of things. Because mm -hmm. I I love learning and seeing all of that stuff. Um, so I've I was into speedrunning long before I actually <laughs> before I actually yeah, started yeah, 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 trying yeah, yeah, it yeah, myself. That's cool, man. Um. Uh, hang on, like I've I've been had. I um uh I asked you if you was anything you wanted to say, and then you asked me a question. Um, I did do that, didn't yeah, I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been I mean, it all, it <laughs> I've led into me talking a bunch. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that basically that was the bit of the story we didn't get because I talked about getting into Golden Eye speed running, mm -hmm. and I oh, I didn't, right, I didn't right, talk right. about got you got you got you got you got you got you uh huh. So now um, we have the full. Now we have the full art. So right, right, right. And so would would goose? Would, sorry, would speed run just come up um, in that kind of general watching vids, summoning salt, and you would have seen the speed lore in the sidebar, and then just go into it. Yeah, because um, I had I had just started trying to speed run Celeste myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I think I think at the time I started frequenting the speedrunning subreddit mm -hmm. and looking at regular posts on that. Um, and then I think I think someone posted the speed lore to the subreddit. I think that's how I found it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I think. I It's either that or it just showed up in my YouTube recommended. I couldn't tell you for sure. It was one of the two. Mm -hmm. But... And then the rest is so, history. And the rest, the rest is not just history. It's history that's been discussed. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we covered all of that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of... Any gaps that we've left? We even talked about Ophos. How have we not talked about Ophos? That's uh, my fault. Oh, I didn't know. It was, it's a, that was your uh, that was your baby. Ophos is Ophos is my fault. Um, yeah, how did that come about? So, yeah, we're good. So, um, Funny, I always said Ophos. This would have been yeah. this would have been relatively. Relatively early. When was the first post? Yeah, May of 2018. So I've been in the community like less than two months. And uh, Dusky and I are in a VC call. Um, just, you know, in a VC call. Playing, whatever mm -hmm. you do. Um, and there were several other people in the VC call. And then eventually they left. And it was just Dusky and I. And I was like, you know, I've had this idea. And I've, I, I had legitimately had this idea in my head, like, as soon as I joined the Elite, I had this idea, because I've always loved meme runs of all varieties. I mm -hmm. love meme speed uh -huh, runs. Uh -huh. I mean, it's literally the most watched video on my channel. Mm -hmm. Thanks, YouTube. Um, and so I'm like, I, I had a really good idea for a meme category in Goldeneye that I don't think has been done. Um, what if we tried to fail an objective as fast as we could? Mm-hmm. And then Dusky's like, oh, that sounds that sounds interesting. Let's mm -hmm. give that a shot. And then so um, the two of us went through, we just went through a bunch of levels, tried to like figure out what was the fastest thing we could fail, like what we could do. Like um, I brought up how like we couldn't fail an objective on Depot, but we could warp into the train at the end and uh -huh. complete and exit the level without completing objective A. Mm -hmm. um, and that's obviously now the Ophos for Depot agent. Mm hmm. Um, and we just went through all that, and then I think the next day or later that night, Dusky posted the first Ophos thread um, on the forums, uh -huh. and then it took off from there. It's pretty wild how many people ended up playing Ophos, yeah, yeah, yeah. even a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, Henrik has uh -huh. train Ophos times. Ace has facility Ophos times. Luke uh -huh. has Ophos mm -hmm. times as well. Like, um, there's... 
a lot that actually got played, which is pretty... It, it still blows my mind yeah, to see cool, how man. many people actually ended up playing Ophos, even just in a very small, small amount. Um, I didn't touch it, which is funny. I, mm-hmm. I just kind of let it happen. Um, I did not... I did not play any actual Ophos for like a couple months, I think. Uh-huh. Um, and then so the main, the first big wave of Ophos kind of went through, and then I came in and I just tore the entire category to shreds. Mm-hmm. I legitimately have put more energy and focus into Ophos times than I have some of my main rankings times. Oh uh-huh, wow! Um, so that's that's why so many. Ofo's times are untied by me because no one else is really bothered to play it. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, but I I put in a lot of time to get a lot of things. So um, I a lot of like a lot of my ingenuity when it's come to strats are Ofo's strats. Mm-hmm. Um, like Dusky and I, there's a pause. There's like a weird strat we do on Jungle Agent in order to pause out faster after killing Nat right at the beginning. Uh-huh. Um, Dusky and I worked that out together. He beat me to it, um, but also got that. Um, there was the warp on Depot, which I helped introduce. Um, helped find so many of these weird strats. And then uh, I just took advantage of things that people didn't think about. Like, um, people got, when the Bunker 2 cell warp was discovered, like, people were like, oh, we can use this for Ophos. Look at this great <laughs> meme. And so they did Ofo, They did it on Agent. Mm-hmm. They killed Nat in five seconds and then called it a day. Uh-huh. No one bothered to do it on SA or Double O. They're the same level. <laughs> yeah. So then I did it, <laughs> like, <laughs> a year and a half after the fact of the strategy being discovered. Um, so it's, it's, it's a time. And then some of the Ophos levels are just stupid. Like, uh, Runway is really silly. Runway is extremely luck-dependent. Mm-hmm. Um, the silo runs are probably my best runs. 11 is the record on Agent, and then I untied 11 on SA and Double O. Those are very solid, solid runs. Those are hard. Uh-huh. You're proud um, of those ones. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. If I had to pick Ophos times I'm proudest of, it's probably silo 11s. Just because the Runway times are just luck. Mm-hmm. Um, that in Jungle 5 is wild, because you have to use 2.x to pull out the pistol earlier than you normally could in uh-huh. order to shoot Nat sooner, uh-huh. and then you basically need, like, five perfect quick pauses and a pause out in order wow. to get five. Like, okay. it is, it is one of the tightest times on the oh, Ophos page. I didn't know that. I didn't know there was so much lore. Oh, there's... There's ton. I've considered doing like a history of Ophos. Oh, you should, dude. Video. You should. You I, should. I'd I, that. I keep saying to myself, I will. We'll we'll see. So much of it is just me talking about my accomplishments mm-hmm. that it seems a little. <laughs> yeah, why not, dude? You deserve it. A, seems a bit much, but mm-hmm. there's a bit like uh, White Ted put into some pretty crazy strategies on Frigate with the two point, uh, like two point three, two point one strats. Mm-hmm. There's some pretty crazy things you can do there to get some pretty, pretty crazy times. Like, it's it's funny how much time has actually been invested into Ophos, like, as a as a speedrun. Uh-huh, yeah. So, so the so vast after, majority, the vast majority of them are maxed, though. So After, <laughs> after your, um, after the introduction series, like, o- o- Ophos would be, or Ophos would be your, your next greatest achievement. <laughs> Oh, certainly. Mm -hmm. And, like, you could almost say I'm more proud of Ophos just because it's silly and I like my meme runs. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're looking for my serious contribution, it's definitely the intro's beginner guide. But if you're looking for my meme (laughs) contribution, it's definitely Ophos. Mm -hmm. Ophos is, like, probably, like, considering LTK is a serious league... Ophos is probably the second most played non-serious league under Turbo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Turbo Turbo has more of like a past history than a present history. It was played yeah. more in the old days. Mm-hmm. Um but they definitely played it more than they played than anyone played Ophos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except for maybe me. Mm-hmm. But Yeah, I I would agree with that, I think. <laughs> mm. So yeah, you've you've had quite a contribution like to the game and like in the community. Like you should, uh, no, you should 
uh, you've had a pretty unorthodox, but definitely nonetheless uh, uh, impactful Goldeneye career. Unorthodox is fun, though. Mm -hmm. Like, that's more of the normal. stuff people remember. Like, from the speed lores, I don't remember every Clem and Ace untied. Mm -hmm. I remember the Illu runs. Uh -huh. Because it's Illu. Uh-huh. Like, honestly, if, if you had to point to someone as kind of my inspiration mm -hmm. and why I enjoyed being a part of the community so much, it's probably Illu. Just because uh, of the things he did so early on that I emulated or attempted to emulate a lot in like my video edits. Because every time I got a good run, I would. It wasn't just run plus music and ship. Mm -hmm. I always threw there was something else on there, like Dan Fifty Three. Um, do you know the? Have you watched my Dan Fifty Three celebration video? Uh, I have not. Are you familiar with like the classic like? Um, Mexican cantina band song like that. I synced up a bunch of missed lock shots to that song. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And that was my first video edit for the elite. Mm -hmm. So I synced up a bunch of lock shots and then the rest of the song played while the run happened. Like okay. I did all sorts of stuff like that. Um, some serious, some not whole variety of things. So. And I, I have a pretty, pretty big log of actual video edits. I'm probably one of the most one of the largest sets of actual edited runs and that sort of thing. Not just not just counting music. Because uh -huh. anyone fast. anyone can go run, music, boom, done. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do with not Indeed. as much thought as I think they should. That's another. That, that, you that's a tangent. More, I'll you go. Wanna on. See more, you want to see more high high effort edits? Yes, more high effort edits. Also, I want people to stop and think more about the music they're putting in their runs. I think so many people are just like, okay, I like this song. This run is good. Okay, now they're together and they are one, and I am done. Mm -hmm. I spend a ridiculous amount of time when I'm picking out songs for most of my runs because every. Songs all have different feels. They have different speeds. They have different instrumentations. They have different lyrics. They have different so many other things. Mm -hmm. And I have always been meticulous in trying to find two things that match up. A run that matches a song. Mm -hmm. And they go together. Like, so many people put really high-energy songs over really low-energy runs. Uh -huh. Or they put low-energy songs over high-energy runs. Um, I always try to make sure everything matches. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I am a huge fan of syncing. Uh -huh. Like something happens on screen and uh -huh. it lines yeah, yeah, up with yeah, the music yeah, yeah, yeah. in some uh -huh. way. If you watch and pay attention to my runs, there is always at minimum one syncing point, if not multiple. Uh -huh. And so often I have syncing points that like there's no way I could have like planned that in advance mm -hmm. but i noticed it when i put the tracks together like a good example um would be uh my first run in fuck uh depot sa40 mm -hmm. um there's a specific hit where bond looks down to start the strafing which mm -hmm. is synced with the music and then there's the pivot to get through the like mesh gate that mm -hmm. also lines up with the music um uh uh, would you say that that's um well what do you think do you, so i know that um there's the whole like uh, you know that the um what's it called um uh, dark side of the rainbow dark side of the moon if you're talking pink floyd no d d dark side of the rainbow so um oh. the dark side of the rainbow is when um it's where you watch um the wizard of oz with um the dark side of the moon like of, um over the top and like it's, it's supposed to sync up really well, apparently, if you start the record like uh, like uh, 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 something. Oh, point. okay. And have you ever heard I, of that? You know what? Now that I, I just googled it, now that I'm looking at, it, I think I've heard about people talking about that. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I I always try to be intentional with it. I especially like when I was trying to figure out a couple of my Fock runs. I'm like, I have no idea what song I want to try to put over this. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna play. I'm just gonna play the video at what would be a good probably sync point and see how I feel watching it. Mm -hmm. I 
I had probably dozens of trial runs on a lot of my runs just until I found I'm like this found is it this right is the song, song that works. Mm-hmm. So I I put a lot of thought into what song goes with what run. Would you say you've got you've got so if if let's say someone's watching this and they're like man you know what I think I need to start putting more effort into my edits like what what run would you suggest they watch that would be a great example of what you think high quality uh, run selection would be. I don't think it even needs to be high quality necessarily, just high effort. Oh, high effort. Because <laughs> yeah, so many uh-huh. people, so many people suck at video editing. Like I am not very good at video. Yeah, yeah, editing. yeah okay, yeah. But like, but what, what, like, what, what would but, be if someone has to be like, right? Give me your best example of um, uh, a song over a run. Um, some of my favorite edits. My S two world records are good. The tragedy of S two. Um. Is a good one. Um, my 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 damn fifty three video is like very emblematic of like at minimum do something like this, do something, mm-hmm. just sell it, make it make it more special. Um, my cradle thirty three edit from Falk is really good because um, it shows the pain that I right. went through, and it's fell on black days by Soundgarden, mm-hmm. banger of a track, very 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 fitting for my emotional state going through all of mm-hmm. that. Um, my Cavs says, essay. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, Eric says, oh, no, Eric, oh. We're, we're, talk, we're talking about a music video specifically. 107. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 107 is more of a, like, stream edit. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, my month of Aztec video is closer to a music video. There are stream highlights, but there's always music going on, um, and it's a multi-track thing. So that would probably be a good one as well. I know my uh, my Cavs essay edits, my early Cavs essay edits are mm-hmm. very are very popular. Uh, the classic Samo Fletcher back and forth mm-hmm. um, on how Cavs did that, essay. How did that start, by the way? Like, well, what's the story? That's something I, ha- I should have asked about. Like, what's the story behind? Uh, yeah, this is Samo this is Fletcher probably a tangent we should have gone into. Yeah. Um, so Samo joined. I think either shortly before or shortly after me. Let me look. We we joined at very, very similar time. He joined March 17th. So I had been on the rankings for like two and a half weeks when Samo joined. Mm-hmm. Um, and he decided like one day he's like, you know what? I need a rival. I need, I need someone. I need an antagonist. Mm-hmm. Um, to work against and so he was just like scrolling on the rankings page seeing who had posted times recently and he picked like a couple of them at random um and most of them he kind of gave up on uh because they kind of stopped playing or something else um and he posted he posted a time and i'm trying to find I think it was an Egypt run of his. I'm going to see if I can find the specific PR comment of his. Um, Oh, here we go. Found it. Uh Egypt Secret Agent 103 by Samo. Um, This was April 2018. And... I paid pretty close attention to the rankings at the time, and I I I saw every run that came come in came in, and I would look I would look and see at comments and all sorts of things just to like get a better feel for the community and everything. Mm-hmm. And Samo posts this Egypt PB <clears throat> with the comment, "Bopped both my currently unnamed rivals." Feels good, man. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I looked, and sure enough, it beat my Egypt time as it currently sat. Mm-hmm. And so um, the next time I saw Samo in my stream, I'm like, Samo, am I one of your undeclared rivals? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and he's like, yeah, you are. I guess I got found out. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, like a month and a half later, or so the Cavs essay back and forth happened between him and I. Um, he spent forever trying to get a complete on Cavs essay using really bad strats because him and I were still not good players at the time. Um, and then it just happened like 
a day later, I decided I was going to play Cavs SA. Completely unrelated. I wasn't even thinking about him. And I also had a really bad run with bad strats, and I beat him by a second. Mm -hmm. um, and he took that very personally mm -hmm. and worked his butt off to try to beat it. And then he did. Mm -hmm. And then he made this big, long video rant about it. Um, and so I event I saw him post that PV, and I think that, that one has the comment, like, you're going to want to watch this one, Fletcher, or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah, so he posted a 152. I posted a 151. Then he went for 141, and then I saw it, and I saw that it had a comment in video. And I, I looked at the comment, and it reads, This is my own private level, and I will not be speed bullied. Uh -huh. Gonna want to watch this one, Fletcher. Uh -huh. And so, obviously, I took the bait. Mm -hmm. Um. And then so I sat down and immediately grinded out a better run. Um, that would beat him. And then I made a big video at it and beat him. Um, like very quickly. And then uh, he got mad. <laughs> um, again. I, think, I, think, I guess part of the reason why it was, such, it was such an enduring rivalry is that it was two like heavyweight meme lords going at it. In, in a lot of ways it is. Yeah. I think... Um, I think so many people, it, it's, it's an interesting rivalry to think about. Um, I would hazard to say I am perceived by most as the antagonist of the uh -huh. rivalry. I think more people root for Samo than root for me because uh -huh. Samo's kind of perceived as the underdog. He's, uh, whatever level of memeiness I am Samo is more so uh -huh. like he had his whole thing with uh, Samo luxury going for a while. Like he was basically the main meme content producer for the elite for uh -huh. a while there. Um, so it's always been interesting for me to think about like, you know, most people probably are not cheering for me here. Um, mm -hmm. And yet I keep winning. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wouldn't describe you as the antagonist because I'd say he's, um, I don't know. Um, you're de uh, you're definitely like the I don't know. Should we say like the more serene and graceful of the two? Like as in like if the, if I, the, yes. If, the, if there was gonna be a if there was gonna be a movie about the two of you, like I think he's he'd be he'd be the antagonist in that sense, as in just like like the kind of foul mouth, bad tempered one. Whereas you'd be like like the like the pretty uh, pretty uh, you're much more clean cut in that regard. But I think in yeah. terms of um uh notability shall we say like yeah i think people are more aware of like uh the Samo side of it, antics, side of it. So yeah, yeah 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 so it, it's always been interesting for me to reflect on it personally because obviously in my mind it's very simple protagonist he's the antagonist because yeah, yeah, he yeah, is yeah. my rival and yeah. i am me there's no yeah. way i would be anything besides the protagonist mm -hmm. so it's it's always been a very interesting thing for me to think about just because i know that there's plenty in the community that definitely see it the other way around compared to where i do or others that don't see it they just see two people going head to head all the time mm -hmm. so it's it's been very interesting and samo and i get like we don't actually hate each other we uh -huh. like What's your, what's your actual relationship with Samo? I mean, we don't like Polly and I are probably Polly's the closest thing I have to like a like close close friend in the elite. Mm -hmm. um, Polly and I have chatted pretty regularly since 2018, um, kept in touch even during a lot of my quieter periods. Um, obviously, I visited him and spent a couple days down in uh, Atlanta area with him back when I did my worldwide tour. Um, so everyone else is just kind of, I talk, I talk to when I'm around, when I'm in discord, when I'm like in a VC call, when I'm streaming, whatever. Um, so Samo, despite the time difference is often part of that. He's very, like very rarely has he ever been like in a voice call or anything. Cause he doesn't really do that that much mm -hmm. from what I gather. Um, but he does watch my streams pretty regularly. Um, so I, I've I've always kept up on his antics because I'm thoroughly entertained too. Like mm -hmm. that that's part of the fun. It's like I enjoy watching the crazy nonsense he gets up to, and then I can take that, I can put my own twist on it, and then mm -hmm. annoy him essentially. Yeah. <laughs> so 
Mm, uh, okay, so you made the we got to the point where you had made this um, this video in return, like you'd like what you'd you'd bopped him, he'd bopped you back, and then you'd you'd bopped him back again, and then made this video. Yeah, and then I made that video, um, and then oh, this is so long ago. I have to pull up the historical record to help me out. Um. Yeah, so then he bopped me, he made another long video th thing about it, and then I came back with another uh, Cavs SAPB, which he would not get because he was going for all the pointless time records, the, mm -hmm. the PTRs at the time, and it was worth points. So he wasn't going to cross that line for a uh -huh, while. Okay. Um, and then eventually he did in SAMPAP, um, and then I crossed, but I had crossed it already with... Uh, with part 11, I believe. Um, and then eventually he went and grinded Cavs SA for a mine completion, which he landed on 117 eventually. Um, and at that point, I already had 115. I'd been mm -hmm. sitting on 115 for a year. He got mm -hmm. ca he got his mine completion in April of 2020. Mm -hmm. I got my 115, which was not my first mine completion. It was like my 10th. I got mm -hmm. that in February of 2019. So I'd mm -hmm. been sitting on a huge bob for years, and uh -huh. then I eventually, obviously, just recently posted it. Mm -hmm. So is this still a bob? Oh yeah, uh, I okay. still I have 115. He is 117 because uh -huh, okay. he only he only has the one PB. I think no, he got he got like a really really bad one. He got like a 120 plus something. He got yeah, he got a 121. Yeah, he got a 121 for Sampap. So that bopped me at the time. And then that is what got me back into playing Cavs SA. That's what mm -hmm. got me going for 115. And then I got 115, and then I held on to it for, you know, three and a half, four-ish years. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, and held on to that bop for a while. So that that was kind of the the end of it. But the, the fun part about where that is is the 115 edit in Fock is Samo and myself traveling together through the desert. Um uh -huh. and that music oh, video. Yeah, edit. of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then then we it's it's both of us getting on the Cavs SA mm -hmm. mind throw bus um and joining everyone mm -hmm. that at the time of the edit had a uh mind throw completion. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. that that edit is so good. There's so many small things in that that are so good. There's one part where Birdie, or at least the person with Birdie's head, um, is holding uh, an N64 controller and just like bashing the shit out of it on a seat <laughs> in the background, <laughs> uh -huh. which was which is perfect for Birdie. Um, so, and of course, Samo and I cross paths in a couple other places. We butted heads on streets. The classic streets essay. 00155s and my big video with that. That led mm -hmm. to his like insane rant. Mm -hmm. Um the car rant, the uh -huh. that one. Which which that one that that's another one of my favorite video edits mm -hmm. is my Streets SA00 edit cuz it's my runs set to Metallica um why am I blanking on the name of the song? Uh, the Day That Never Comes. Uh -huh. um, set to that song with Samo, part of, parts of Samo's rant playing over the video. It's so good. That, that ended up in speed lore. That got played in uh -huh. full length uh -huh. during the street mm -hmm. speed lore. So... You, like, you, that you, might you, be you, the you video. You need to link me some of these actually. afterwards because I think I've missed out on quite a lot of the uh, Fletcher Samuel lore. <laughs> yeah, there's there's not like a ton, a ton that's like still preserved somewhere. I have my Cavs videos, he has his, and then I have my In Celebration Pwned Streets mm -hmm. Edition, <laughs> which is. That one has 486 views. That's probably one of my most viewed uh -huh. runs on YouTube, probably.
Yeah, it has more than my damn my damn video. Mm -hmm. But it's it's an experience. I it, it was fun going after him. Like when I got into top fifty, I had a sixty o sweep on him. I had him bopped on every level. Oh wow! Okay. So. Do, do, so how so um. Where do you feel that his untied leaves the rivalry now? I mean, I'm never going to go for it. Like, I, he was in my stream. I streamed last night, and he was in my stream. Um, and we had a pretty good exchange. I said, um, don't worry, you're safe. I have no intention of ever going for 38. And mm -hmm. you can decide whether you take that as an insult or a compliment, mm -hmm. alluding to the fact that he was so degenerate that he bothered to get that time and uh -huh. I will never be that level <clears throat> of degenerate. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, he's like, I choose to take it as an insult, which makes it complimentary. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, exactly. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Glad we're on the same page. Yeah, stuff. So that was literally an interaction with him last night. So, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, Cal, we we did talk about it, Cal. Yeah, I mean, if you have any specific um, questions, then, like, yeah, I'll be sure to... Yeah, by all means, yeah, if to, you have a... To put them to... This will probably be a good time to open up, the, if there's any... If there's anybody left. Um, yeah, to open yeah, up any kind, trying, of, any kind of Q&A. Um, trying to think if there's anything I haven't gone over. I went over my my music selection. I went over my history. I went over Samo. I've been uh, I've been asked by um, an anonymous person on in my DMs. Um, uh, tell uh, Verbsky a random viewer is wondering where they can find the streets elevator. What does that mean? It's 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 right by the start of the level. You don't know where the streets elevator is. Uh, I don't. There's an elevator in streets. I I was unaware of this. Yeah. Most so, people are. So it's right at the start of the level. Yeah, it's like uh, off to the side. It's like Val Val goes into it when he runs away. Uh, you know? Okay, I can't tell if I'm being memed on or not at the moment. But... You're being heavily memed on. Okay, all right. Um, there was. A... <laughs> so this has been this has been a very well preserved meme um, in my Discord and in my stream. Uh, mm -hmm. Eric especially loves to bring it up. Um, I don't remember if Eric was even there for that specific stream. I know D Jones was. David and I were watching uh, Mike Mint stream on streets. He was going for, I think he was going for 112 or 155s or something. And um, I decided I was just going to start messing with him. And I started explaining to him the streets elevator and how he could get a better time by, uh -huh. by going to it. He's like, you uh -huh. don't know where the streets elevator is? Uh -huh. And David and I were in a voice call as we were both watching his stream, chatting in his stream chat. Uh -huh. And David and I were just losing our minds. Wait, like, who, like, who, was, who, who was this? Sorry? Mike Mint. He's uh, not around right, anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh -huh. yeah, so we we were... Uh -huh. <laughs> he, he did not know how to take any of it. He never uh -huh. called us out on like just lying to him or uh -huh. trying to mess with him. But we we went on for a long time on that. Wow. Um, so that 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 meme has been maintained for a long time. Uh -huh. So shout out to That's the street elevator. That's a good one. Maybe maybe that one needs to be needs to be we need a bit of haze. Maybe that of that would uh be something for the for the newcomers. A little bit of gentle hazing could be uh could yes. be <laughs> yeah. And that was I mean Mike Mitt and I were very much on the same level as players at the time. So it was it was only David was maybe David was maybe punching up at the time, but uh -huh. even that we uh -huh. were we were all friends, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cal, I so Cal, when I told you, I'm like, I'll want to make chat episode one day. That's because I was like, when I release Fock, I'm gonna finally want to do make uh, chat because okay, I'm gonna so... have a lot of stuff to go over. Mm -hmm. So I did finally release Fock. It's just the show changed hands in the meantime, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> among among other things too. Yeah. And that, that, but, that, that's, that's kind of cool. I mean, obviously, I had no idea, but like, um, as you can imagine, like Fox was the Fox was the reason why I thought, oh, this would be like a great time to yeah. That's get Fletcher on. that's always been that's always been the thought. Like, so when you reached out to me, I was like, oh, perfect. I was about uh -huh, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I awesome was going to figure out how to get on anyway. Uh -huh, so you can try and weasel, weasel your way on. 
I, I I knew I would at some point, just because I knew I'd done enough. Like I've done uh-huh. enough. Uh-huh. I've been here. Yeah, like it's been. I... Yeah, I, I uh, um, I, don't know, I guess not particularly. Yeah. So, yeah, any more questions from anybody? But yeah, like, yeah. I hope. Um, the uh, one thing I'll I'll hint at this here. I really I need to sit down and do a stream where I do director's commentary on part eleven and Falk. Um I highly encourage anyone that is curious and looking for something to do because they're bored, rewatch Falk and see what details you missed the first time. It is uh-huh. full, full of Easter eggs and random references and all sorts of stuff everywhere. Uh-huh. Like okay. constantly. There's stuff written like there's a couple moments where you see like a shower in one of my old apartments and there's mm-hmm. stuff written on the shower in like the fog. Uh-huh. Um wow. There's okay. stuff lying high, around high that's effort. like referential. Like the opening track in Fock is Abaddon's Bolero by Emerson Lake and Palmer. And just as an example of how much I planned and how much I thought about these things. Um the album that that track is on, which is their, it's their trilogy album. Um, oh, during the yeah, opening the sequence. The yeah, during is, the is opening that, is sequence. That the one of with, the, is that the one with From the Beginning on it? Yes, yeah, that's, okay. track mm-hmm. that's track four. That's track four. Abaddon's Bolero is the closer, track nine. Okay. Um, and I knew I wanted this crazy chord chase. I'd already recorded a bunch of it in an old apartment. I was recording some of it mm-hmm. in a new apartment because I wanted more footage. And I'd moved, and I still wasn't ready to edit it together. Um, which is why so much changes during the opening sequence, because that's literally filmed like a year and a half apart. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of stuff in one apartment, and then a bunch of stuff in another apartment. Um, in the background, during one of the shots in the newer apartment, you can see the album, the CD, sitting on top of my CD player. Uh-huh. Um, just like in the background. There's all sorts of little... Little tiny things like that that I threw uh, in. That's uh, just uh, a that's just a small taste. But I always put a lot of thought into just about everything. Uh huh. So yeah, that was, uh, I, if you do that direct, if you do the 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 direct commentary, like, I think that that will be super cool. I, I definitely try and. Catch I, I will at some point. I've been I've been meaning to. I'll mm-hmm. find a spot at some time to do uh-huh. that. Okay, I want to. I want to do it for part eleven as well. Just, right, well, just, it's just, been just, just don't leave it like don't leave it like five years this time. Oh no, I won't. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pull that again. I am a hundred percent. I am not gonna play any more Goldeneye PD offline. I'm done mm-hmm. with all that. That was not great for my mental health of the game, as I've mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, that was part of the reason I think that it burned me out was because I was doing it all offline for the horde. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm, yeah done doing any of that and i personally recommend everyone to stop doing it oh i so are you, are you would you call would you describe yourself as an anti-hoarder now uh i kind of have been for a while but it's awkward because like i was hoarding for an incredibly long time so mm-hmm. it's like i am definitely a hypocrite here by being anti-hoard but then holding on to a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. um but i think it's another reason why the elite is like not as active as it was Mm -hmm. because so many people are obsessed with like oh if i'm gonna go for a good time it has to be for a horde Uh uh-huh like Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna stream i'm not gonna stream anymore no one watches Mm -hmm. the streams like i'm done streaming like i'm just gonna go i'm gonna go offline i'm gonna hoard stuff and i that's part of the reason why i think the community is not as active as it could be because we don't when we were when the when the elite was more active in 2018 2019 it's, there were a lot of streams yeah. there were a lot of people out in the public eye doing these sorts of things and that helps bring in viewers it helps bring in new members it helps keep everyone engaged with other members of the community and i think we kind of got a little too condensed into mm-hmm. small little discord calls with like people streaming to like one or two people in a discord voice call yeah, yeah, yeah. um i think we got a that's another thing that's just like a cultural thing. Like, I'm not mm-hmm. going to me saying, hey, stop hoarding. It's probably not good for the community, even though it's fun. Mm-hmm. I've done it myself. Like, I'm guilty of it. Mm-hmm. It's probably not good for the, like, longevity. Yeah, I, of I, the I, I, I was kind of thinking that, like, I, I like maybe it would be if so when the next when or if the next horde comes out, I think it might be a good idea if we actually put it somewhere like um, uh, the speedrun subreddit or something. 
So I'd be like, I don't know, we actually try and kind of like bring bring outside people into it. Like, hey, there's this like event going on. If you're into Goldeneye, like why don't you come along and I I don't think that's gonna work because outside of the Goldeneye Perfect Dark community, everyone hates people it. People don't like it. Uh-huh. Okay. Like, I don't know how familiar you are with the whole Oh yeah, I know M60, the whole damn like, Mario Kart. Thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that soured everyone to it, which mm-hmm. again soured more people to the elite. Like the elite's already a controversial community in uh-huh. like the wider popular like the wider popular eye of the speedrunning community. Mm-hmm. So it, that's not that's not the way to fix that issue. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I imagine I imagined an advertisement for it would be like, hey, they like, were doing this thing. But like just so everybody knows. The elite is pretty much the one community that's that's okay with this. So I don't know. Like we're we're all gonna enjoy ourselves. Like hope hope that you guys yeah. can too. The, the like problem that. the problem is that the people you want to attract are those that have opinions. Uh-huh. And th- there's a good number of casual speedrunning viewers mm-hmm. that believe that their opinions should change every community from the ground up. They uh-huh. believe there should be no glitches. They yeah. believe that everything should be timed RTA, which mm-hmm. is never going to happen in PD Goldeneye because of the timing system we have in the games. Like, yeah. we're never going to time smaller than a second. Like, mm-hmm. sorry, the game spits it out. This is what we've worked our entire community around for, like, the better part of, like, almost three decades. Mm-hmm. Like, it is going to stay that way. It is not going to change. Like, yeah. you will not magically change the elite's mind on that. Mm-hmm. Like, the same will be true of hoarding. Like, that's dead outside of every community that is in the elite, pretty much. Yeah. Like, well, it, I, well, it was never alive to begin with. So. Well, yeah. Because mm. I, I've, I've said my, I've said my, okay. <laughs> I've said All my right. Right. <laughs> I don't All really. Right. All right, fair enough. I could ramble, but I, yeah. I already have rambled both sarcastically and non sarcastically. There's a really long drunk horde rant that i did that's in part 11 which also makes it funny so uh-huh, uh-huh, okay what so was that was that an, an an anti-hoarding rant yes there's an anti it's 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 there's a good deal of sarcasm in it uh-huh. there's also some truth if you dig into it um but uh-huh. there is an anti-hoarding rant in a horde okay all by right. me and 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 now your second uh uh anti-hoarding message comes directly after a Five years, well, four or five yes. year hoard. Okay. All yes. Right. Okay. All right. You're really not selling it, dude. I, I know I'm not. That's part of the humor in it, though. That's uh-huh. part of why it's. And uh-huh. see, I at the end of the day, if it's funny, like I'll probably go with that. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that, that, that makes sense. Um. Mm. Uh. I guess while we're talking, anything else that you can think of immediately that's just like. You know what? And not in, just in terms of the quick fixes, but in terms of the culture as well. Anything else you can think of that might be helpful for attracting new players? Because, I mean, I think, I don't know, um, we definitely need some fresh ideas in that regard. I don't know. I think it's just some slower cultural things that are. it's probably due for a shift. I think everyone needs to calm down. I think everyone needs to learn to value more than just untides. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we need to move away from hoarding, but I mean, I'm not going to stand up on my soapbox of a guy that just released like a multi-year mm-hmm. hoard. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I only like, and again, I'm not like, I'm not like a leader figure in the elite. I've never held a leadership. I've never held a leadership position. Like the closest thing I am to a leader is I'm the guy that co-founded Ophos and mm-hmm. did the beginner's guide that like yeah. everyone uses now. Mm-hmm. But like, that doesn't give me a platform. That doesn't give me any authority. So, mm-hmm. and I'm okay with that. I'm happy to play my little silly game from 27 years ago and mm-hmm. carry on with my life. <laughs> yeah, that sounds that, that sounds that sounds that's pretty reasonable. Anonymous thing. viewer asked me when the R level will be unbanned in your chat. Never. That's Eric Runway will no longer be banned in my chat when it's not funny and it is still funny. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, well, so is there like a word filter on runway in your chat? Yeah, I there's a bunch of different like spellings and like ways of typing out runway that are banned in my chat. Uh huh. Um, because uh, there was one point where there were like 
three or four viewers who were probably all the same guy, like, using alts, mm -hmm. like, who was just trying to be annoying and, like, rile me up. Um, By also getting uh, to play Runway. And they kept bringing up a Runway, like, over and over. And over. I was, like, grinding... It, or just, like, talking about it in general? <laughs> I was grinding Silo at the time, and they were constantly like, play si play uh, Runway Double O. Mm -hmm. Play Runway Double O. Play Runway Double O. I think they came in in a stream where I was like doing something on Runway Double O, okay. and then they just hyper-fixated on obsessed that. obsessed with it? Okay. Yeah, and I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, this is just a little annoying, and I think it'd be really funny if I banned Runway in the chat, because mm -hmm. then people are going to get really confused when they try to talk about Runway, mm -hmm. and it works, it works so well. Uh -huh. It's so funny. I've had, like, I think... Oh, I think like Luke and Ace have been in my chat and have attempted to type out runway for whatever uh -huh. reason. Uh -huh. And then they're like, my message is, why isn't my message going through? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, good stuff, dude. So yeah, know that. any small thing like that is pretty good. Mm -hmm. We've, we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of memes. I, I, I could, I could do an entire mate chat just on the memes of my stream and discord. Like it's absurd. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Well, I mean, I'm sure a lot of them will be will be covered in the um, uh, the, the commentary for um, uh, for Falk. I, I'm sure that a lot of them will come up. Mm -hmm. And just to give you just to give you a taste, are you familiar with the uh, iceberg memes? Yeah, yeah. Where like yeah, 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 there's yeah. the different levels of the iceberg. Yeah. Well, there is an iceberg for my Twitch stream slash Discord. I just sent it to you. It's a little out of date. Uh -huh. um, there's more that we could add, but uh -huh. okay. yeah, I have a massive like quote database too. Like there's there's so much. Yeah, let me pull this up. Okay. Uh, all right, hang on. Oops. Oh, God damn it. So, so th this is this is only from from. Uh, Fletcher, uh, Fletcher streams. Yeah, this is this is my streams and my Discord. This is a, a good a good selection of the things that have shown right. up over several years. Uh huh. Um. And I I probably remember context on most of these, but I mean, but some, there's some obviously... of them you some of them you don't even remember. I think. Yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm betting there's maybe one or two that I don't remember the. Originality. Oh, I want to see. I want to see uh, how many of these do I actually? Um, uh, I dare say I may not know many of these because I think I don't know. I, don't, I, I I'm sure I've been in your stream like a few times, but um, oh yeah, what's, there's what's, some. What's Mop's damn double O commentary? <laughs> oh, I don't even remember the specifics of oh, that. Eric might remember it. Oh, I think sure. there was like a video that Mop made that got. I did, did. I think it got banned or something. Like it got removed. Mm -hmm. I think. I don't remember the specifics. Uh huh. Uh, it's non PC. Yeah, it was something wild. <laughs> uh -huh. Wait, wait, but, but did, 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 did he actually do a commentary, or is this? Or... I, I believe. I believe so. Man, I would love er, to Eric, see that. Eric, Eric, Eric definitely remembers more about it. Uh huh. The... Than I do, but that was that was an experience. Right, so yeah, so I'm, gonna ask, I'm gonna ask about some of these. So what is the okay. what's the gay apocalypse? <laughs> okay, so um uh I was I was streaming um I think I was streaming streets. Uh-huh. And um I think I was grinding for 112 at the time. And it was either yeah. Um and so I'm streaming, I'm busy streaming, I'm entertaining Twitch chat, I'm playing, whatever. And uh, one guy came in and he's like, uh, dude, what's your Discord? I'd love to join. I'm like, oh, here you go. Here's the Discord. And um, this guy joined, invited a friend, and then uh -huh. the friend came in and spammed the main channel with tons of gay porn. Oh, wow. Like tons. Holy shit. Um, and this is happening in the middle of a stream, so I have to, like, so someone, I think Eric or someone came into my, um, chat and was like, what do you need to deal with this? And so I had to run on over to my Discord and ban them, and uh -huh. I think there was a Russian spammer involved with that, too, but, so, 
That's the gay part. <laughs> okay, all right. Interesting. I didn't know that one. Um, I don't know what else. What else looks, looks, looks interesting? Recently, recently, we also had a straight apocalypse, which is Eric's. Eric's. Uh, I think you oh, might remember yeah, that. Eric, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I do got remember hacked. that. Yeah, I do remember that's, that. Oh, the straight so that's, apocalypse. That's the straight apocalypse. So we <laughs> mm-hmm. have the gay apocalypse and the straight uh-huh. apocalypse. The straight apocalypse isn't on here because this is this is an old iceberg. Uh, uh, but, so, um, I mean, Eric is Jesus. Like, unless that's unless that's different to what I think it is, that sounds fairly straightforward. I, I think there's just the prevailing theory that Eric that he is, is Jesus. In fact Jesus. I think, yeah. Like, I mean, that, that's, he, he, that's has, just, he has the look for it. That just comes up a lot. What's the so, what, what, what's the Asian controversy? <laughs> oh God, there's so many things on this that are just so funny. Um. Are you familiar with um, Speedrun Wiki? Yes. So it's 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 a very bad attempt from some people to to put together like a speedrunning history Wikipedia essentially. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, one and day like, every time I go on there, it looks really sparse and there's like yeah, it's it's there. not good. Um, one day. Um, one day, I think it was Cordy and Gelly and Alexa that all like teamed up, and they decided they were gonna make a speedrun wiki page for me. So they mm-hmm. did, and they filled it with a bunch of nonsense. And one of the one of the sections was something that Gelly had made up, like about how I claimed I was Asian. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was this whole con- like controversy about people being mad. It's like he's, he's just claiming that he, he's clearly not Asian, like that uh-huh. he's claiming that he is. And there was like a back and forth in that whole thing. Mm-hmm. So I I believe that page is long gone. Okay. Um, but that's right. that's what that was. That was a made up nonsensical okay. thing. All right. Um, I blame Gelly. Okay. Uh, well, so what, they've got these two together. So what are the mod drug tests and full frontal nudity? So those are two different things. So the mod drug tests um, was something that my stream moderators came up with. They decided that uh, since I was so specific with my mods uh, that I was drug testing all of them. Uh-huh, like okay. in order to become a mod, you had to be drug tested. Okay, all right. Um, and then full frontal nudity. Are you familiar with the game? Um, God. It's, it's uh, shoot. Eric, help me. What's the name of the game? Why am I blanking on it? Is there some kind of waifu simulator or something like that? No, 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 no. Uh, it's not it. So no, that like so that, that that does sound Japanese. No, let me hold up. It's made by these people. Oh, it's called A Way Out. Um it's a co-op game that's uh, you and another person play as two guys and you break out of a prison together. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, my brother and I were playing it on a, a special birthday stream for me. And um, there's one part where uh, you start off, one guy is already in prison and then the other guy is arriving at prison for the first time. And so as part of the onboarding process for getting into prison he, the new guy has to strip down and then get hosed down completely uh-huh. naked and it's in the game he's completely naked so there's okay. full frontal full nudity front. in the game <laughs> okay. so um, my brother was like Actually, you just straight full frontal nudity uh-huh. okay it was in May yeah Eric could remember better than me um, what's Clutty Saika Pretty sitter. Um, oh, because he's so young and he has a babysitter. No, no, oh. it's his sister. Oh, but it okay. was a typo. I think his sister got dual three, and he uploaded a video of it. But mm-hmm. he had a typo and called her his sitter. Uh-huh. Okay. So, All right. um, uh. What's the even saltier incident? 
So I had a regular in my stream back in the early days. This is like webcam stream. Mm -hmm. um, he was eventually a mod as well in my stream, and his Twitch handle was even saltier. Mm -hmm. And he just disappeared one day and just never showed back up. Oh, okay. Um, so we 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 just allude to the even saltier in in incident and the uh -huh. fact that he's just not been around right, ever right. again. Like, I, like, I assume that was like an uh, um, uh, Evan Cloutier meme. Like, but yeah, okay, that makes sense. No, uh -huh. that was that was before that was before he joined the elite. So. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, the seats, the street elevator here. That I see. Uh huh. Yep, street uh, elevator. Uh, what's Quirty's fake brother? So Quirty, whenever he joined voice calls, uh, his brother was often in the background doing things, mm -hmm. and we just simply said he didn't have a brother. He was making him up. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, All right. <laughs> that Fair one's enough. pretty straightforward. All right. I mean, like, I, I think I think you'll. Um, you, you probably have to have to have a stream where you're. I, mean, I dare say you may you may have done it before, but if you haven't had a stream where you've gone through everything on the iceberg, I think that will be. Uh, uh, it honestly, it honestly needs an update. There's a lot of. Oh wow! A lot like of it, like, that like this, this one's this one's too. Uh, <laughs> there aren't enough on here already. Yeah, there's there's quite a there's quite a few that are missing, but there's there's a lot of. Obviously, we just went over a very uh -huh. small spattering of them, but mm -hmm. there's we've we've been productive over the uh -huh. last well, know, yeah, 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 yeah. years, obviously. Um, oh, well, if there are no more questions, um, unless there's something that you particularly want to get out there or anything like that, then, yeah, we'll uh, say we'll say last call for questions, Eric. That means you. Yeah. Um, while I think if there's anything I haven't gone over. Yeah, that's my boy Polly. I'll just say that. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah like, shout uh, out! Uh, shout uh, out to all the shout out to all the mates. Honestly, uh -huh, there's a yeah. lot of people mm -hmm. that have been watching me pretty regularly. Yeah, since yeah. The I, I'm sure. I'm sure plenty of people are gonna watch this on uh, on the on the vod afterwards. But yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. If that's everything, then. Yeah, cheers for uh, cheers for coming on, man. I uh, yeah, I really thanks for having me. It's it. good time. Had a good time, man. Man, she wants to get through get through three hours. Um, yeah, there were there impressive. weren't really any lulls. We yeah, 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 <laughs> I'll yeah. talk. Just, just, just I'll kept, talk. You know what? Just, I'm good at that. <laughs> just kept, just kept going. Um, yeah, cheers, Eric, for hanging out. Cheers if anybody else is this is like still hanging out. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see see you guys next time. Um, yeah, cheers, everyone. Peace, everyone. When yeah. are we updating the iceberg? Soon. Uh-huh. On stream? Maybe. Something like that? 2028. Okay, all right. Yeah, another four years. <laughs> all right. All right. In a bit, everyone. Cheers.